some beats brother what's up folks welcome back to another episode of thursday night live <laughs> i brought my friend tim tonight and i <laughs> i think he's out back making sure that the potatoes are growing nice and good but i think i keep hey you keep that beat going brother welcome back to another episode Pretty soon the show's gonna be over. <laughs> this is your part. This, this is your part. You, you understand what we did here, folks. We practiced. Yeah. We, we did, yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Thursday Night Live. This is episode 13 and we're still alive. I'm gonna need some better beats over there. I, I know, I know, I know you love this your is the horn. Only key that <laughs> oh, I hope our, I, I hope our microphones aren't <laughs> muted because. <laughs> oh yeah, folks, this is Thursday. We missed you. What a fast week it was. But hey, the weather's warming up, and I hope that doesn't mean that you are going to choose outside activities over this. You would not want to miss this. You would not want to miss this. See, I gave Tim a keyboard this time because he was complaining last time that he didn't know the words to the song. And then I I remembered him, reminded him, there is no words because just like (laughs) all things, there's the night, folks, there is real no agenda here. We're just going to tie a couple flies, we're going to drink some beer, our favorite beer, maybe your favorite beer, and then at the end of the show, we're just going to hang out for a bit. So if you're new to Thursday Night Live, well, this is Thursday, it's nighttime, and we're live. (laughs) Anyways, my name's Dana Lattery, and that guy over there playing with his child's toys. <laughs> I'm Tim Hepburn. What's up, everybody? It's great to be back. It's Thursday. We've been waiting all week for this day, and it's finally here. So let's uh, let's have a great night. Lots of uh, good vibes. It's conversation going. We're gonna tie a couple flies later this evening as well. And later and, in like 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, like roughly soon. And besides that, we're just gonna have some fun. And maybe this will. I mean, this sounds a lot better than it did last week already. <laughs> Practice, Tim. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. <laughs> I also been tying some words. Yeah. Mostly and then I, I gave you a keyboard and you decided, hey, honk, 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 yeah, give me some song. <laughs> so what we are going to try to do is write an original for Thursday Night Live. Yeah. Uh, like this isn't original enough, but. Simple. The best part about Thursday Night Live is you guys and all your comments and your questions. So this is all about fly fishing-ish. 
So yeah. make sure to ask some good questions. I see Mary Dickow's in the house. Oh, yeah. Maybe we can just... Hang on. Hang on. Let me scroll the comments. See if everybody's left. We're down to zero <laughs> viewers. Everybody's going on. So. And nobody blames them. Okay. Alan Schaefer's in the house, and so is Laurie Martin, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Manchiton, and David Blackman. If Terry Sather was from Sylvan Lake, and Chaz is from Edmonton, and Cam's not a top fan, and either is Mark Holcomb, probably because he bought a stealth craft. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Cody Frankie, what's up, my brother? And Bruce Cole's in the house. And tell us, folks, where you're from and what you're drinking. What are you drinking Matthew today? York Hopefully is from stiff. the north, <laughs> but soon enough, you'll be in Santiago. What does Santiago mean, Tim? Santiago? Jacques Heroux is mm. here, and she wonders, he, she, elle, il, it's uh, Francais. Where's Britney, Britney Spears? Spears? Well, she didn't make the show tonight. No, we stole her glasses. She, and yeah, that was it. she showed up for a few minutes. And uh, like yeah, dad called and, said she and had to go just home. like Ron Croteau said, it's Green Vice night. Jason Bags is also here. And if you're using your wife's Facebook account, I want two thumbs up. I don't see the real Jen Lyle. You know the show can't start without her smile. Oh, Did, that was good. I found the right key at the right time. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Are we going to tie some flies or just absolutely make fools of ourselves? Well, I realize mm, <laughs> Tim needs to give his wife back her glasses and hat. <laughs> well, well, the funny thing Joke's is, folks, you. there is absolutely nothing here tonight that we do that is serious. Yeah, that's ish. a fact. But we do have a couple of really cool patterns tonight. One of them is the Dox Bradley. And I asked the question earlier, but... Is that the most classic or one of the most classic lake patterns? Truth be known, I've never fished one. Nope. So, so classic that Marvin Carl and Blake Teague, Nair Novaland and Adrian <laughs> Thibault, Michelle Reed says happy T and now Tim and D. Oh, there's Jen. Like, hey, we can okay, we, we can, can put the goofy stuff start. down. Right. Jen Lyle is in That's the it. house. That's it. We are going to put our acoustic measures aside and we're going to get back to the show because that is what matters most. But hey, if you're just joining in, this is Thursday Night Live and this is season three, episode 13. And uh, like we've sung or said before. Uh, Tim, are you, are you, are you, good. you can't change out no, of the I'm, outfit. I'm, I'm, who's, who's changing? Um, what do you mean outfit? Like this isn't something we would normally and if wear. You, hey, if you guys love our shirts, they're for sale uh, through my buddy Sammy. Sammy Superstar. Sammy Cool. And I can put the link here and support him. He's a super awesome dude. He's just killing it on the internet, on the live streaming side of things. And uh, he got some merch. He loves tacos. So... Uh, we got some shirts to wear on the show because, yeah. hey, I'm so cool and that is superstar. <laughs> I can't Can help but think that you literally are in the garden all day. <laughs> well, and I just figured that you just finished building a barn, so I guess we're okay, good. Wow. <laughs> if, if it's a barn I needed, I built one. And then guess who shows up? Uh, Mr. Roman Quintana yeah, from... Well. Montana. Montana, folks. We would love to be oh, down yeah. in Montana right yeah. now. Usually the springtime is when we head down there and visit all of our friends from Montana. And yeah. Mr. Quintana, we haven't met yet. But we will, we will soon. because soon this border is going to open and the world's going to be brand new, fresh again, because COVID's on its way out. Mark my words, you heard it here first on <laughs> Thursday night. I just jinxed us. We're going to inspire it to leave, hopefully. Okay. All right. Speaking of so, fresh, you should take that hat off. Something looks all fresh here from the sides. Oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Oh. Didn't just lose that yesterday. I just didn't lose that yesterday. <laughs> that got taken from the top. So if you like our hats, you can buy them from Carly Jean Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. um, they don't really have men's apparel, but hey, I mean, wear it and wear it with pride. But yeah. I know why you all came, because one of the most popular um, things on the show tonight is not me, and it's not Tim, and it's not the flies. It is quite simply, oh, oh the new and improved <laughs> baking cam, folks. If, you're, if that doesn't excite you, nothing will. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Not nothing thing. will excite you if that doesn't excite you. So 
I can't see with these glasses. Russell Sloan's in the house. Uh, Eugene, what's up, my brother? Um, so, yeah, we're going to get to that. That's from our friends at the Coca Tree Bake Shop in Olds, Alberta, Canada. Mm-hmm. And that is a something raspberry chocolate something muffin cake. <laughs> muffin cake. And it's pretty much a muffin cake. I think it's sugar free. <laughs> Essentially sugar free. So, I don't think so. Um, we do take so. ourselves seriously a little bit, but let us know uh, where you're from. And now it's time to say, really say hi to you guys. Mm-hmm. Russell Sloan, Mike Dumont, what's up, brother? Joe House, rocking it. Uh, Ryan Pacific, Airdrie, and he's drinking a Budweiser. He's nice. keeping her real. Keeping real. Uh, Michael McCaudery, good day. Should I get my dog? Yes. yes. And so we <laughs> will. We will get a band going if you guys want to be in our band. <laughs> Um, we're going to need a singer, a guitar player, and a piano player. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I, I got that triangle covered. <laughs> yeah, I I will hit record. Scott Nelson, what's yeah. up? Sean Ellison, he's got my Riverfest up. Oh, he yeah. got Riverfest up in GP. Wow. Uh, well, Sean, have you sent the uh, beef jerky that I requested? Yes, um, this is a curious question. Okay, we're going to get back to this, but first, I got to get out of this gig and we got to say thanks to our sponsors real quick we'll be right back give us 60 seconds so we can derobe and hopefully <laughs> re-robe and come back to the show with the amount of time we spend in front of our vices don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut oh, f- Great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. We all deserve the right to stay organized, no matter what or where your space is. Your fly Kia table will turn any space into a well organized fly tying realm. Own your domain. Yeah, Whoa. okay. Well, wow. I can see again. Yeah. And, uh, you guys just got more beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I told Tim with those glasses and the amount of scratches on them, I don't even need beer to feel like I'm drunk, but no. but I am going to drink a beer tonight, and it's a it's a Weizenbach again. I do love these. Do. love them a lot. Because dude. they're dark, fruity, and warm. Dark, fruity, and warm. Right. I mean, who doesn't want a dark, fruity, and warm beer? So you Can't get more fruity than this. That's... that's <laughs> <laughs> That's that's a fact. That is from the Angry Orchard and Come on, uh, focus for me. pull back a bit. Pull there, the, there we go. Uh, oh, it, it likes you, Tim. Uh, the ca- your me. camera likes you, and that's, that's okay. That's okay. Um, Davis Kimball, what's happening? Steve Johnson, um, Steve and Davis, I believe, are brothers, buddies, buddies, brothers. This is the same thing. Same thing. Um, Jen, you're almost as hot as my husband. Well, <laughs> nobody is as no. hot as... Uh, we will tell those stories on tonight about uh, the real Jen Lyle's husband getting hit on by uh, 18-year-olds yes. at Wings last night. Oh. Yeah, it was a fact. It was a fact. I was there. I was witnessing it, and I was like, Stephen, we're like married men. We can't be doing this. And <laughs> he ran home and told his wife. He's like, hey, I, I still got... I mean, they, they were like... They were hitting on him. Oh, that, yeah. That's the truth. I don't doubt it. It was the truth. It was something in, in his eyes and the way he was winking at him, I think. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Nothing <laughs> to do with that. <laughs> and so Flyingo is a big thing tonight. And we do have our prizes all ready to go. Yes. And they will be given out from a bingo perspective. So if you don't have your bingo card, uh, you can download one and... Um, um download there right that. there you can download your bingo cards right there folks that's how you're gonna get in on the giveaways today yeah we have two two big giveaways like two big prizes things and then there's two more giveaways and those two more giveaways are only for local people because they're gift cards to Rocky Mountain fly shop and they can only be used in person. 
Um, so if you want to drive here from wherever, you're more than welcome to to win that gift card. But that is that. Um, we got the halftime show. We got another video for you guys today, and um, we're gonna tie some flies. So yeah. I think I'm forgetting everything I wanted to say. What could there be more to say? It's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you? What do you? What do we time first, Tim? Let's get everybody yeah, to let's, uh, let's get you guys kind of ready. So get their ready. threads going and uh, boom! Look at that. This is the guy we're gonna start with. So this is the Doc Spratly. We are going to start with this fly. Um, what I'm gonna use for thread tonight on both flies <clears throat> is I'm gonna use some UTC 140 in black. Uh, black of any anything's gonna work, but I pref I just want a little bit heavier thread for this guy. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna use the 140. So you can prepare that. As far as materials go, for this fly specifically, um, you're gonna need where the tail and the gills are tied with guinea fowl feather. So if you have some of that hanging around, if you don't, it's okay. Just go grab some hackle fiber of some kind. It's got some longer um, feathers on it. Um, it'll work just fine. This is just kind of more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, then we're using some uh, yarn or wool, which is the body. It just has a ribbing of gold or silver. And then the rest is pretty simple. We just got some um, pheasant tail and a little bit of peacock curl up at the head. And we're tying this on a long streamer hook. This is a size four, um, four X long. And yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing for this first one. So I'll give you guys a second to get that stuff arranged if you need to. Yeah, <coughs> get your, well that's more, oh, well, Jim's not watching tonight. He's got other I things. I, I'm like, you should put it on in the background and. Uh, he disagreed. Well, he said, uh, I can't tell you what he said, but <laughs> he said he would get in trouble. He uh, would get in trouble. Gotcha. So well, that's fair. Um, okay, that. back to the comments because your guys' comments are what matters. And uh, Cam said the best show opener to date. So we'll we, <laughs> we literally have all week to try to think of something to do, and it is twelve <laughs> minutes before the show starts that we come that's together generous. with that and running around the house trying to find. Uh, stuff like that. Something we to make we do have a few. We asked you guys last week about the uh, Disney themed things, and um, I just haven't found a Trey's Grande uh, <laughs> bell bell suit. So, okay, um, uh, yes. Sean Ellison. It is Beaver Lodge beef jerky. It's in Grand Prairie. They have a shop on the, I think on the west side. Anyways, contact me because there's a lot of folks down here. Um, who will pay well that. for that stuff, and we can't get it. Um, okay, Tim. Tim's not having this. Doesn't have a driver. Tim works tomorrow. Yes. Sorry, um, but there was a question. Out. Somebody wanted to know um, what Tim was drinking because Matt uh, hanging out with my neighbor, and we want to know what Tim is drinking. Ah, gotcha. Well, we'll see if this will clear up for you. This is even do this. It helps. Ah, come on. Just takes your pretty face out of the equation. There it is. This Sorry. is Angry Orchard. This is just a hard cider. Hard cider. He likes before, hard cider. Before beer, it was pretty much strictly cider for me. I didn't drink beer, and pretty much for until like I met you. Tell you, actually. Tell you, <laughs> you know, so, but you know what I'm grown, saying, folks. After Tim introduced like me to ciders, I thought, hey, when we retire one day, we should head down to the Cayman Islands and open up a cider stop, short, like beachside cider place, right? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, and then we've been thinking of names for this place, and yeah. I, I just haven't quite come up with a good name. So I'm gonna keep thinking tonight. Um, if we open up a little a cider bar down in the Cayman Islands, uh, what we would call it? <laughs> I, I have some ideas that I'll throw with you guys, and uh, You're so bad. Well, we'll go. I'm surprised <laughs> Russ isn't in on this one. So. Okay, where are we at? You guys got uh, your bobbins rocking, ready to... Um, <clears throat> New pair of scissors, Ron. Well, do we have the scissors for you? Oh, who needs... Oh, good graciousness. So the, the great thing about these scissors, besides the fact that they're great already, is now you can order them from, from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. The Shore Scissors. Net. Epic. And, um... Uh, John, well, that would be quite the drive, but uh, hopefully the border opens and we get you up here fishing red hooks. Yes. Because that's the only experience she's had on the boat. <laughs> really? Yeah, hook? at the boat launch, she's like, this... I'm like, you want to catch me. fish? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. we can throw on something like the Doc Spratly uh -huh. if yeah, yeah. if you want, if it makes you feel good. So, 
Okay, we got new boats. Tim's mic is a little quiet. Ooh. Well, that's because Tim is a little quiet. So, <clears throat> yes, a little. Ooh, that sounds Ooh, louder. That sounds deep. That sounds deep. And hey, boisterous. if it wasn't for the quaint and uh, <laughs> fine ears of Quinn Sunias, yes. We would not know that. So yeah, if you guys have any tips about audio or whatever, we can't hear what's happening on the other side of things to a, to a point. <laughs> and uh, through the border. Yeah, okay, appreciate. okay, we're gonna get to the flies here, folks. Um, make sure you get your bingo cards because as soon mm -hmm. as this flies over, we're jumping right into <laughs> bingo. We're gonna do the halftime show, which is another sweet vid for you guys mm -hmm. and then we're going to come back and we're going to do some more giveaways and we're going to tie the pair of post ant which should go pretty quick yep. and then uh we're going to hang out and drink some beers and then uh you know you, you know, know all that stuff okay that stuff. okay tim all tim right. it's you <clears throat> it's me so one of the one of the names for the our our uh, bar in the cayman islands was balls deep insider wow so, yeah, wow, well, Cody. that's Cody. That's very Cody. close to what he wanted to name it. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, just guys. Trying to do something more with like the name of of the island. Oh yeah. I'll think about what it. What was soon. it? Cayman. Cayman. The Island? Cayman Islands. Yeah. yeah. So I'll huh. think. Okay, I'll think. think. It's right on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So something we didn't mention off the start of today is. What is Thursday Night Live? So what we're gonna bring to you this evening, <clears throat> is we tie two flies every night. Um, we have, like I said, two patterns. Tonight we're gonna do the Doc Spratly, as well as we're going to do a pair post ant. Um, so every evening we're gonna do two different patterns. Um, if you purchase from us at the beginning of the year, this is the first year that we made full seasons of um, each episode. So we, we put out 80 full seasons, and in each season there's 20 episodes. As you can see here, we are on episode 13. So that's crazy, but after tonight, we only got seven left. Um, besides that, what comes in here? So any in these package, uh, you're gonna have each of these flies already tied once for you. So no matter what happens in your tying tonight, you should be able to take a fly out and fish with it. Um, and then we have enough material in there to tie roughly that same fly two times again, okay? So essentially you're gonna get about six flies out of each package. Um, and if you didn't uh, grab these or didn't purchase these from us, that's okay. That's why we're gonna, we're gonna list off the materials before we start each fly. So hopefully you have a chance to go grab them if you have them in your tying stuff. Now, also, we give 20 kits a week, um, just as our give back to the community, our local community here, we give these packages away at uh, Bow River Brewing in Calgary, Alberta. I believe they release them on Tuesday, if I remember. Yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday, yeah. So on Tuesday, they make them available. You can go pick them up, um, maybe grab some beer, support, support the local brewery, um, and then you can have a package to tie along with us, okay? So that's what Thursday Night Live is. That's what we're doing tonight, <clears throat> and we are going to go ahead and be careful as always guys and you open these up you got some hooks in the bottom so make sure you just set those aside so they don't go running off on you and now you're gonna have inside there you got two little bags so we're gonna use the the one that doesn't have the orange uh, material in it this this one here so what is the Doc Spratly what is it meant to imitate um, it was funny I was talking with Dana about it today I said it's actually one of the first flies that I ever bought uh, when I first started because as many others I started with a very simple kit that I purchased from Canadian Tire and they actually sold this fly there, of, of all things. Um, now, what is it? And I've read a little bit of controversy um, and kind of researching it today. But the vast majority of people say that this is a dragonfly nymph, or in extreme cases where they said they believe that the original pattern was designed by a dentist out of the States who was fishing on a lake in BC. And now he, they have, on the specific lake, they have very, very large chironomids. And so I don't believe he was tying it this big, um, but he was tying it as a chronomid imitation. So when you research it a little bit, people still fish it as a chronomid imitation or um, a dragonfly nymph. So I would say maybe it goes a little bit more dragonfly nymph, but you obviously can change the colors, uh, do lots with it. The most common colors is what you're gonna see here. So um, silver over black or gold over black um, with, a, with a brown uh, pheasant tail wing. Also, you might see it in red. Red is probably the most common other color that you would see it in. But tonight, we're gonna kinda tie in the traditional color with the tra traditional materials that it would be tied in. So go ahead and get your hook in your vise, <clears throat> whatever that you are tying on. If you're one of the Norvice lovers and you're tying on your, on your Norvice tonight, that is awesome. I need to adjust mine slightly. I did not put it back quite on straight. 
There we go. That's a little better. So what we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to start off by just laying down um, a good thread base for all the other materials we're going to put on. Um, oh, oh, so for bingo, people are asking, all last, last week's cards work. Okay, perfect. We will stick with those cards for the rest of the year. So. Oh, perfect. Keep it easy for you guys. <clears throat> So I went ahead and I started my thread just behind the eye. Now I want you to just go ahead and work your thread all the way back to the hook bend, okay? Just laying a nice thread base down as we're gonna be putting lots of materials down. And it's nice to have a little bit of something for those materials to grab onto. So on this specific hook, we're gonna leave our, um, our thread right about at the, at the barb. Um, just kind of a convenient place. We don't need to go down into the bend. And you'll see why when we uh, put our first material on here, how we don't want that to go over the bend, but we actually want it to sit up quite nice. This is kind of a, I, something I do like about this pattern too, is that it's, it's almost like a traditional salmon fly in a sense, um, or even a saltwater pattern. It's kind of like a hair wing, kind of crossed with a nymph. Uh, uses some good techniques, even on like, you know, super fancy salmon flies that you would see. Use similar techniques. This is just very basic techniques that you could apply later to um, that style of tying. Um, I personally don't do a lot of that kind of tying, um, but this is a, is a good kind of introduction into it. So what we've done here is we've got some, some guinea fowl um, feathers. So we peeled them off already for you. So when you're getting them, they're already kind of peeled. Now, I don't want to grab a ginormous chunk off of here, but if you were holding an actual guinea fowl feather, strip the fluff off the bottom of the stem, and then you're going to reach up and you're going to grab probably 10, 12 fibers off like so, okay? Now I'm going to grab those. I'm going to pull them off the stem. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to trim off those curlies. I just call them curlies, the butts off the back. <clears throat> and now I'm going to have a tail that looks something like this. Okay. Now, as far as length is concerned, I like to measure it off the hook eye. So up here, I want it to extend the very tips to extend about halfway down the hook shank. Okay. So about halfway down, I'm going to now transfer that over to where I left my thread and switch hands. Now I'm going to do that gathering wrap we've talked about. I'm going to spin my bobbin clockwise. Now I'm left-handed. If you're right-handed, you would be doing counterclockwise. That's going to cause that thread to jump rearward and grab onto that material. And now I'm just going to take, that's just the first wrap, and then I'm going to go second one a little tighter, third tighter, fourth, and so on. I'm going to secure those butts down to the hook shank. And then I'm going to work my thread back again. And all I want to be able to see is that that, uh, that tail is kind of staying up I don't want it to, to bend over the curve, so if I took my thread too far over the bend, you would see that. You can add a wrap underneath it. So all I did was take a wrap and go underneath it, lift up, and then save the work with one more wrap on the hook shank. And that'll assist in keeping it so that it's, it's nice and level and it's not gonna tip over, okay? Next thing we're gonna put in here. Actually, what I'm gonna say first, guys, is at any time in this time process, there's no stupid question. If Dana, Dana can't answer it or he needs to ask me, he will. I'm not gonna read the comments when I'm, when I'm working here. Um, but I do. But he reads them, so he'll let me know if you have a question I'm, about what I'm we're like doing. I'm like your best friend's <coughs> sister. Best friend's sister. Uh, but the most important thing is there's three letters, S-O-S. -S. Type them in, we'll stop, we'll let you catch up, or if you have a question you need answered or you want something repeated, yes. uh, we wanna take that time because we want this to be an interactive time process. I don't want this to be something we just fly through because we wanna get through it. We got nowhere else to be tonight. This is where we want to be. So let's take our time. Um, and if you got questions, ask questions. Okay. SOS means stop our show. Mm. And if, it, I mean, even if you need to go for a drink or a, or a pedal or uh, grab another drink or your dog needs out, <laughs> yeah. SOS, SOS, we'll pause. We got, we got things to fill in the blanks. Oh yeah. Uh, but make sure that we're going at your guys' speed. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, guys. The next material we're gonna do is we're gonna put on our ribbing, okay? So <clears throat> what we provided to you is this kind of, it's a silver gloss floss um, ribbing or braid, they might call it. Um, this is what we're gonna use. Con um, what you could also use instead is you could use wire or you could use um, even some tinsel, something like that. Just creating a ribbing and segmentation on the fly. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna tie this in basically right where I left my thread. Make sure it's secured in all the way up to right where that tail stops now we are going to create a little bit of a bump back here in the back of the fly because of all, all the things we've tied in but it's going to even out here shortly and you'll see why okay now i want to extend or i want to run my thread back forward and now i'm going to leave about a quarter of the overall hook shank is what we're going to have for our head 
So I'll show you this guy here. Okay, so we know that this head, we want it to be roughly a quarter of the overall hook shank. So that's where I'm gonna leave my thread because that's where, where I'm gonna first tie in my, um, tie in my yarn that I'm gonna run to the back of the fly and then wrap back forward. Okay, so we just wanna always remember that's where we're gonna tie in our wing as well as our gills. And we kinda wanna leave about a quarter of the fly for that head, okay? So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is we provided you guys with this, it actually works super well. It's actually just a black yarn. And we've stripped it up into little strips for you. Um, I would recommend grabbing no less than three strands if you're using our material because there are different bulks. So I'll show you a couple of different ones. So for instance, this guy. This one here, the body, as you can tell, is a lot more streamlined. It's a lot thinner than let's say this guy here. Than this one. Okay, so see the difference between this guy and this guy. So the amount of bulk that you want to create on the fly is determined by how much of this body material you're putting on. Um, this is this one right here that I'm about to show you. This one was done with three strands. So you can see it's still not as bulky as this one. So if you want a bulkier looking fly, you can step it up to four. Um, that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to take four strands of this uh, yarn and tie it in. And then we're gonna work it back to the back of the fly and that's gonna create a nice even underbody and that's why I wasn't too worried about creating a little bit of a bump back there. Just wanna make sure that that yarn is evened up at the front before we tie it in. And now I'm just gonna come in here, lay it on top of the hook shank. And you'll see once I start to tie it in that it really um, kind of shrinks down and compresses against the hook itself. Now it's just some nice touching wraps. I'm gonna take that yarn rearward just making that nice underbody. That's why we tied it in up front. I want to bring it back right to where I left everything else. So right about that hook point. I don't want to go that was one wrap too far. I want to make sure that I don't crush that tail. Okay. So now that I've got it there, what I'm going to do is then go back and wrap over top of everything, moving my thread back forward again. I'm going to do a little half hitch here. I'm going to save my work so it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna get my, uh, my bobbin out of the way. Um, if you guys aren't used to tying with a bobbin cradle, um, I can honestly say I didn't do a ton of it before I, had a, before I started tying on the Norby system. But even if just having that, that bobbin cradle that you can get for most vices, getting your thread out of the way when you're doing flies like this where you're wrapping multiple materials forward, it's actually a really big asset and it kind of helps keep everything clean the way you move. You're not working around your, um, your thread all the time, which is a huge advantage. Yeah, <clears throat> another thing, just kind of like a soft plug for Norvice, <laughs> is that on these um, these auto bobbins here, one of the biggest struggles is coming back to your your hook and getting that thread back on your spool. <clears throat> while you might have some material in your hands, can yeah. be very frustrating. And uh, Tim will just show you there, kind of how it just. So for me, if you could look in the top corner picture of myself, you can see I just picked my bobbin off the cradle. And as I r move it back towards my hook, it's gathering all that line back onto the spool. You'll see it come back in the other camera. Boom. Right? So the frustration, the frustration is exactly what Dana said. In the past, if you did use a bobbin cradle or lots of things we do in time, we pull thread down. Then you're there trying to wind your thread back up to get back to your bobbin to get to your hook. That's... Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's like... A, oh, Game changer, really. Because uh, I think a reason people don't <laughs> tie flies is it's frustrating, and when you're when you're use you don't have three hands, most yeah. of us. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, Cam might legs maybe. I got actually speaking of Cam, I can't wait to show something that he oh, made yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Anyways, that's just a soft plug for the Autobob. Yeah, I mean obviously Norvice is a sponsor for us, and we have no no problem in having a shameless plug for him, but. Uh, I'll be honest, we wouldn't be using Norvice if we didn't believe in the product. Um, we're not here for the highest bidder. We, we're using what we're using because we love it. And we're thankful that they also want to be on board with what we're doing. So uh, mm -hmm. Matt, Matt Ryder said uh, uh, that he assumes you chew the crap out of your nails. Uh, yes, you're correct. And But he um, also uses toilet paper, so most of the crap is not in his nails. Yeah, it's not in my nails anymore. It's not anymore, yeah, but yeah. if it's there, you chew it. <laughs> I yeah. also chew my nails. I just he fortunately... He doesn't have to show his hands. I don't have to show my fingers. 
Yeah, we're still waiting on that uh, that manicure uh, sponsorship. Yeah, though. you guys were gonna start at Go. Where's Trout Maharishi? Anyways, he yeah, he's gonna start at Go. Yeah, he went rogue last week and this week, two in a row. He's I don't know where he's going. Consider yourself banned. <laughs> Not for real, but for real. Okay, guys. Now that we got that thread or that yarn, sorry, um, worked onto or tied in here at the back, we're just gonna start wrapping it forward. Okay. So just nice open wraps, creating a nice even underbody all the way up to where we left our thread. I'm gonna uh, Ron, hold tight with that question about preloading the bobbin. We'll explain that after here. Yeah, for sure. And if we don't, make sure we do. We will do that for you. So then um, to secure our material, we always do a couple wraps behind, a couple wraps in front, repeat, um, and then we can get it out of the way. But make sure you got that tied in and tied off pretty good before you cut it, because that's a bummer if it all comes undone. So Sean asks uh, that he likes the thinner look for chronomids. Uh, thinner might be good lake pattern uh, for trout, but thicker might be better for pikes. Yeah. Um, probably the best answer is try. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, like we said, we can't really speak with this pattern a ton because this is one I haven't fished a lot of. Um, I do know that a lot of people have fished it. I mean, it was developed in in or for British Columbia on a lot of their amazing trout lakes there. And uh, I personally, I always thought it was a streamer. I thought it was uh, a small bait fish pattern, which I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, and it shocked me way. when you when you uh, filled me in on that today. What's that? What shocked me when oh, you yeah. were telling me it was like a chronomid. Yeah, like... I didn't. I would have not have guessed that, but because um, right. it looks a lot like a like a wet fly or a salmon fly. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that if you fished it as a, a small streamer pattern, like we have some lakes I'm excited to try it on, to be honest, yeah. just to see if it works. I, I would say the biggest thing about fly fishing, uh, Sean, and I'm learning every day I go out, so um, is try try stuff uh, and, and do vary your patterns and figure out at the end of the day why they're working uh, because... I mean, there's a lot of variables that go into why flies work. Some of them work because they're better and the materials and the design of them. And some of them, the fit, it's just, a, it's really hard to. It's something it's almost impossible to actually quantify. Yeah, I mean, we talk about this a lot with even our different styles of fly fishing and what we do with our clients and our boats and what has success some days doesn't have success other days and how can you actually quantify. But the one thing that I think Dan and I would both agree with is when it comes to fishing, it has a lot more to do with the confidence in which you fish that fly than maybe the fly yeah. itself. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and uh, probably the uh, let's bring me back in here. I feel I feel like the yeah. I feel like I'm uh, yeah. just hanging out talking. So uh, in hopper fishing, like you could probably get a dozen guides together, say on the Bow River, and say what's your three favorite hopper patterns there is going to be crossover but there's also a lot of guides that are showing me things i'm like i would never use that mm -hmm. it doesn't work and and it's their go-to and it's just because you're confident about it and and it works and i think you just fish them a little harder or or you work harder to fish them more productively uh but as far as this fly being thinner i mean make some thinner make some thicker and, and try them out and and it's usually when the fishing's tough is when we learn the most because we have to try different things and then they work and then we keep going with them and if they keep working it's like wow I've, i'm on to something here and it's really like a science experiment where you just you have to keep trying but but the same thing is like the fly that works in april or, May, or what is it march yeah. um it it might not work in july it's not because the fly stopped working it's because conditions and the environment has changed um, so don't lose sight of that as well uh, is there's so many variables to the environment as to why flies work at certain times and why they don't at other mm -hmm. it's like a big circle question answer yeah. but uh, it's one of those things you're never we probably never gonna have the right answer but what you will find is what works for you on your local waters or waters yeah. you fish the most something we do here um, there's seven of us the Fly Fishing Board of Outfitters as guides. We're very close with a couple other of the outfitters. And so if we try to, nobody really comes up with a brand new pattern, 
butt-ish kind of thing, um, one of our favorite flies, is it's like, hey, try this. Hey, you guys try this. And, and you kind of get it out to people fishing it differently. And if they're having the same results, it's probably a very effective pattern. And uh, it's just like science. You just have to, you know, put it out there and, and try it. And then you have waters that get pressured more than others and maybe they see those patterns too much and then they're less likely to eat it if they've felt the tug after <laughs> yeah, <laughs> eating it yeah. a couple times. Um, yeah, so Craig says this is the best part of this, the challenge of trying to figure the fish out. Yeah, totally. Literally, like the Bow River is probably the worst river to guide other than <laughs> yeah. Steelhead Rivers uh, because, yeah, you, you you were were, were human. And the fishing can be really tough and it can be really epic. And, you know, we get to be out there most days. So we're fortunate to get to try things more often. But uh, on those tough days, it's fun because you're like, I, I got to figure this out. And then when you do and you get rewarded, you're a better angler. And to me, that's that's the jigsaw of fly fishing. Uh, it's just you're always, always a student of the game. Uh, just like fly tying, always, always, always trying to give it. Cool. If you want, if you if you think you're the best, probably you're not. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, like a little thumbs up. There. That's that's where it ends. <laughs> All right, get back with right, you guys. and the fly. Don't have a lot to do here still. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my because I've already half hitched this. I'm gonna send this back over here. Carson Williams, first mm. time in the Thursday Night Live. We welcome you. We appreciate Carson. you being here. Absolutely. Ask questions, tell jokes, make fun of Cam if you want. Cam's <laughs> yeah. not one of us. He's just... Oh, he's one of us. <laughs> Can't get rid of him. Yes, David. These shirts are <laughs> awesome. So, guys, all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do nice open spiral. Um, don't want them to be too close to each other, but I do want to try to keep them as even as possible moving forward. If you've got a, a rotating uh, vice of some kind, this can be made quite easily, as I just, as I just showed you there. Um, you basically that way you can just hold the angle and then keep rotating and it'll it'll keep those wraps nice and even uh, terry said that his research shows that he has lots of flies that don't work <laughs> <laughs> amen to that oh there's so many flies in my box that just yeah, don't six work. fly boxes so I'll go ahead and uh get that material secured and then you can get it out and now what we're going to do is we're going to start by tying in what we're going to call our gills and then we're going to tie in our wing and that's a wrap on this fly. Okay. So I'm going to flip it upside down. Um, that's a wrap on this fly. Yeah. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of course. I think you're missing something, yeah. Tim. <laughs> no. Uh, do we guide barbless? Yes. 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 100. We in Alberta, it's a gray area, but yes, it's not technically legal or, or I should say it's illegal. illegal to fish with barbs but it is how we guide it, it's how i guide yeah and that's everybody's personal decision um and you'll have clients that won't like that but i think with a brief conversation as to why we do it they also will understand yeah. so okay uh, aaron said alberta is barbless it's it it's a misconception technically it's not but it tell everybody it is yeah tell everybody it is so guys we're gonna get back to that guinea fowl we're gonna go take another chunk off that. Now this one we're gonna have about the same size as the last one. So I mean we're guessing here about 10 to 12 fibers. Um, I'm gonna go again and snip off those curlies or the butts. Get yeah. rid of those. Jeff Thompson said they come out of the back of your neck easier, barbless. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. We do have a pretty wild trick that we could show you yeah. guys on this show. I'll stick it in your arm and I'll show how yeah, to. Yeah, you out. go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't mind it. Okay. So this, uh, this gill, we're gonna call it a gill for lack of better terms. When we come in here and we put it on the fly, I'm gonna measure so that from the tie-in point where I'm put, placing it, I want the very, very outstretched tips of that. So as you can see against my hand, just the very, very tips of um, that guinea fowl, I'm gonna have it extend to that hook point, no farther than that, okay? So I'm gonna hold it there because I want it to stay perfectly on the bottom currently on top but on the bottom of the fly I'm gonna take a nice securing wrap cord that thread back up and all that means is you're gonna spin it so it'll cord up and I'm gonna make sure I can secure that and make sure before I put too many wraps down because I have those uh, the butts I can still grab onto I want to make sure that I secured it so it's right on as you can see there it's right centered on the bottom of the fly 
And then I'm gonna take some thread wraps back to that quarter way mark, because we still need to build that head, okay? So there we go, I can check it again. Yeah, just extend to the tips. Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna snip out the butt so that they don't extend into the eye of the fly. There we go, snip those out of the way. And then I'm just gonna take a few thread wraps down just to secure it. Um, we are gonna try to make a bit of a ramp, so a bigger head up here and as a ramp down to the, to the eye, because that's how we're gonna shape this head. But the peacock curl we put on is gonna do a lot of that for us. Okay, so our gills are in. Now what we need. We got a bunch of pheasant tail that we've stripped off of the stem, like so, okay. So we're gonna grab again here. It's, it's a tough one to, to gauge. You don't have to have a ton of fibers, but from what we gave you, I would say just split it in half, okay? So take half of what we gave you, and that's what we're gonna tie in. And this is, we're gonna call this, for lack of better terms, we're gonna call this our wing. And now, how far do I want my wing to be? Now, I've also read some controversy on this. Um, people tie it differently. But the biggest consensus that I saw was you want it to extend just beyond the back bend of the hook, but not to exceed or reach the back of the tail. So find a spot that's somewhere in the middle of that tail, and that's where we're gonna call it good, okay? Again, we want this to stay on top of the fly. So I wanna make sure I tie it in right on top. I'm gonna switch hands here. Now that I've got my measurements, now I'm gonna take a nice gathering wrap. See how my thread jumped forward there away, which I don't want it to do. I want it to reach back and grab. So that's where I'm gonna do my clockwise spin. For you, if you're right-handed, it would be counterclockwise. And now you can see my thread is actually jumping back against my fingers so I can secure it as far back as I would like. And now, before I put too many wraps down, you can see it's still not oriented quite where I want it. If I were to flip it up to you, it's off to one side a little bit. So I'm gonna take and adjust that because I can hold on to the butts as well. And now that is sticking straight up and I'm not gonna want that to stay that way either, but I'll show you how we're gonna fix that here momentarily. So I'm gonna take some thread wraps now to secure those butts. But before, they get, before I get all the way down to the eye, I'm gonna snip it out. We're still trying to create that nice ramp out of the thread. And bring that back up. And I wanna wrap my thread back so it's evenly up against the bottom gill and the top wing, which it, you can see there, looks like it's pretty close. So some, <clears throat> just to say quick, some of you guys wanting to order Norvice, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop is now a Norvice dealer. So check them out. Uh, there was a question about uh, a payment plan. I, I don't know, you'd have to talk to Colin or call into the shop, but they do have Norvice. So definitely give them a call and they will hook you up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay guys, so as you see here, I got that wing is standing pretty pretty straight up on me. I don't really like that like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually come in here with just something small and circular. I'm gonna use this whip finish tool. And why I'm actually- Why did you choose that over something else? Well, I don't know, maybe because <laughs> it's, <yeah>. it's PG <laughs> <laughs> and your zipper stuck. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that, you dick. Okay, oh, I'm wow. gonna- <laughs> That's right. That's... No pun intended, no pun intended. Timothy. I'm gonna take this material and I'm actually just gonna do one quick wrap around and I'm gonna slowly slide that back. I might have to do it a couple times. What that's gonna do is create just a little bit of a bend so it lays back more, okay? Do it again. Do it again. No, heat heat it up with your breath. <laughs> 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 that wing doesn't have a chance. That just fell off. Yep. What's better than time. resin? Your breath. Yes. Um, there we go. Okay. Uh, do you get a bamboo base as well? No, you don't, but you can buy a fly Kia table. <laughs> wow, you're going to roll tonight. Well, it's questions being yeah, asked. It's true. The fly Kia table is $199. The, the bamboo base or, or, or piece of wood is like 120 something. So, honestly, Scott, check out the fly Kia tables. They're on Rocky Mountain Fly Shop's website. Um, a uh, bunch of people in here have them and that's a great way to attach your Norvice. Uh, super handy. It's just like, I, I don't know why those bamboo uh, bases exist. They, well, they're, they're, yeah, there's so many options when it comes to it. I mean, you honestly could just grab a piece of plywood and put two holes in yeah, it and you're Yeah, two ready by to 10 go. and you're rocking. Um, 
the reason that we developed the fly Kia table is, is for its versatility and we wanted something, I mean, as someone who is an avid tire and I, I actually tie in multiple places, I go from home to Here, work just to... let's hold that. Let's show this sure. commercial, but at the end of the commercials is the fly Kia table. So you can just kind of see uh, how it goes together. With the amount of time we spend in front of our vices, don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? There are a lot of great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. We all deserve the right to stay organized, no matter what or where your space is. Your fly Kia table will turn any space into a well organized fly tying realm. Own your domain. All right. There you go. So yeah, that's the fly Kia table. Um, we we make those. That's our design. Uh, Cam is our draftsman, so he he drew them up for us. Uh, so yeah, check them out. They're they are pretty. They're pretty awesome. But yeah, like Tib said, you could go a bunch of different ways and get grab a piece of two by four. Well, you would need a little more than a two by four, but two by ten or just a little piece of plywood. You can go as simple as you want. Uh, but those fly Kia tables are pretty killer. Okay, so Bruce is SOS low on scotch. Let's let Bruce head over <laughs> there. Let's make sure is the baking cam still still on, still uh, notification free. Notification free. And uh, well, Bruce Cameron is getting himself some scotch. I want you guys to think about how good this would taste when I'll it hits you know. when it hits your lips. <laughs> That sweet, sultry taste of sugar raspberry with chocolate shavings on top of a moist... I know wow. I know what we're going to call this, the cider joint. What's that? I figured it out. Our cider joint in the Cayman Islands, we're going to call it Cayman Cider. That is the most beautiful name I have ever thought of. And uh, are you guys hungry yet? What's uh, up? Cayman. Cayman Islands. Okay. I, I couldn't bring your face in because it's red, like your yeah, shirt. It is. Okay, now yeah. you're back. All right. Let's finish this fly, folks. <laughs> right. Let's hit the halftime show. We've got a little video for you. Yes, let's and do it. And then, uh, okay, Bruce is back. I don't know. Okay. Your scotch literally must have been. Right next to him. Yeah. 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 Okay, guys, so we gave you a bunch of peacock feathers. Um, we are going to grab, I want you to grab four of them for me. So we're going to make a nice little bulbous head on this guy. So take four four strands get their tips fairly even Oop, that's only three let's go one more uh kelsey asks are pontoon boats good on the boat they are um it's yeah so talk cam cam can talk to that he's used his quite a few times bruce uh, does too oh i guess bruce has got a water master but yeah. similar there it's a little hard to like fish and row, but they're fantastic. Gets you to spots that you can't get to from the shore, so yeah, uh, get out definitely. Okay, guys, so I took those four strands, um, and remember, as we've talked about before, these are very brittle material. So I want to go in and just break out the tips, because those about an inch of the tips is extremely um, br brittle and will break easily. So then I'm going to be left with nice long strands. Uh, I'm going to have four in total here. I'm gonna come and tie those in up on the head, work my thread back till it's up against that wing. And now I'm just gonna lay a nice thread base down. If you don't have a nice looking head right now, if it's not a nice um, cone shape, then I want you to go and work some threads in. We want it to be nice and bulky up here and then evenly taper down to the eye. And once we have that even taper, we'll build up the bulk with the, um, the peacock curl. So don't worry too much about that. Um, I'm going to come in here and just do a quick half hitch and I'm going to get my bobbin out of the way 
And now all I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna wrap this to create a nice, um, a nice bulky looking head on this. And it's got a nice sheen to it uh, that Peacock Curl does. It's nice and shiny. So I'm just gonna do nice touching wraps, even maybe slightly over wrapping because you you got four of those strands. And the, then, uh, sorry, just the fly Kia tables are at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop dot net. Dot net. You got it. And then I'm gonna come. John got her. Good job, guys. Good job. I'm, all I'm doing, guys, I'm just securing those fibers, doing a couple wraps behind, a couple wraps in front. I did that twice. Um, this is one that's a real bummer if you don't get it secured because you can't redo this with these once you've done this. So I'm gonna come in here, snip that out, do a couple thread wraps to make sure I'm good and locked in, and then I'm gonna whip finish. Okay, so whip finish this up right behind the eye. So as we talked about before, I like to take it slow once so you can see it. I'm gonna come in with the hook side of my whip finish tool. I'm gonna stab. I'm gonna wrap it around the butt. I'm naturally gonna let it spin, come vertical, and you'll see your number four. Once you see number four, slide your thread down to the eye, and now we're ready to rotate. One, two, three, four. Slowly let the thread off the butt end. Now we use that pick at the front, right against the hook, slide it off. Okay. I'm gonna snip out my thread. I'm gonna touch it with a little bit of uh, resin and we're gonna call this a wrap on this fly. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of Sally Hansen's here. Hard as nails. Maybe I should put this on my nails. Yeah. Well, we had a, we had a game plan for that today, but uh, failed. There we go, guys. That is your Doc Spratly. Doc to Spratly. Doc to Spratly. You think it's called Doc Spratly because he was a dentist named I Doc Spratly? I wonder. I, I never saw, I never found it when I researched it, but if you guys it. know, yeah, let us know. We're always curious. If you guys know where the Doc Spratly came from, well, we know where it, we know where it came from. But is it because it's Doc Spratly because it was a dentist who designed that? It's mm -hmm. a great tie, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Without you, this would just be a variety show <laughs> <laughs> without flies. <laughs> That's uh, true. Yes, yes. So Bruce just said, hey, if anybody wants to join him on a pontoon float, uh, Bruce has his water master. And uh, definitely, you guys hook up with each other. Go fishing. This is where you meet really cool people. Um, lots of really cool friendships have formed from the past seasons. And yeah. some of them are more than just friendships. <laughs> <laughs> not saying no, not any saying, names, not saying names, but... Uh, <laughs> Aaron. But hey. yeah. Hey, okay, a so that's the Doc Spratly, and then what I need to do with you guys is talk about some giveaways, oh, yeah. because this is giveaway number one. Ooh. We've got a bugger pack from our friends at Shore, and the, the yellows. Uh, also adding one of their waste baskets, a Shore sticker, a Shore fishing rally cap. Nice. And there's more. There's more. A Thursday Night Live keychain. Gotta cover up that beautiful face. There it is. Okay, if you guys get our keychains, okay, they're not for sale, they're just giveaways. There's a protective film over the front. Uh, peel it off, and it looks way better than before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we also have a, hopefully these aren't needed much longer, but a shore fishing face mask so we got the face mask the this waste basket the rally cap i call it the rally cap the bugger pack and a thursday night live keychain and then the next giveaway is going to be after so this will be the first one here nice. i don't have anywhere to put all this stuff <laughs> so much room on that desk there you go. Um, and all the other giveaways just went out yesterday uh, for the past couple, three weeks. So you guys should be seeing those soon. And for everybody who has ordered stickers, they are shipped and you should also be seeing them pretty soon. And we thank you for the support on the stickers. So let's play some bingo. We're going to yeah. call, we're going to get out your bingo cards. Um, make sure to miss any questions. <laughs> Eric's already guessed the numbers. Love it. <laughs> No uh, today, I'm looking no to get on the water for my first time ever. Yeah. 
So if you guys are getting out in your pontoons, let us know. If we're free, we'll bring the drift boat and we'll, we'll float uh, near you and around you. <laughs> yes, um, and around. Anyone see Cam's fish that he caught last Friday? <sighs> yeah, wow. fish of a lifetime. Yeah. I bet you that thing was 10 pounds. And I'm not a fan of measuring fish, but we kind of made a mark on the... Um, on the net and it it's around that 26 27 inch <laughs> brown, brown trout, trout uh yeah that's a big that's a big yes big matt you did i think you ordered two different orders and i sent your second order out today so okay guys mm -hmm. um yeah so let's go to the bingo hang on let me bingo, pause bingo. this go to the bingo mm -hmm. oh look what's there cupcake cam <laughs> Okay, so because you guys all know that this requires a little bit of bandangle jangle. Oh, yes. We'll call out some names, guys, and as we do every week, we're looking for four corners on your card to be filled. Four corners, okay? So well, when you get bingo, say bingo just like you would normally do. And Type it in. Okay, so I think we called... Did we call one bingo game last week? Yeah, I think so, this one. Yeah, okay. But so it's important, now. guys, if you, um, as soon as you get it, type it in. We're going to verify it off of the number on the top of your card. Um, last week was a little bit, we had a couple that were really close to bingo together. Yeah. Uh, but there was someone behind. who actually bingoed earlier, so we can, yeah. we can double check that. Okay, so we're going to call six numbers, and then we're going to watch our video. So No, I said eight. Eight. Yep. We're going to call eight numbers, and if you... If it hasn't been one in those first eight calls, we're going to go to our film and we're going to come back and we're going to finish off on those. Okay, so No Fly Zone and Lucky Hat are the first two calls. Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School is the third call. I need to open up my beer because I am having a sleepover tonight here. Okay, number four is You Farmed Him. Now what does that mean, Dana? You farmed him. Well, Cam didn't farm his fish. He <laughs> caught it and landed it. So yes, no good for Cam. Me. Okay, I've, I wasn't looking at this. So get your bingo cards out, folks. That first giveaway is coming up here. We're calling eight, eight calls. And then we're going to go watch a little video. And we're going to come back and we're going to call the rest if nobody has won it. So did anybody win four corners? Ben? Does that mean that you won? Because he said four corners again, yes. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe want to quit my job and head to the river. <laughs> don't, yeah. So, funny enough. So, number five is let him run. And Cam did let him run. Yeah. And when he hooked into that fish, he looked at me and said, uh, I think I hooked a beaver. <laughs> like, legit thought, like a 26, 27 inch fish that's around 10 pounds. Um, that's pretty special. <laughs> yeah. Um, so number six is set the hook. Oftentimes while guiding Jen Lyle's husband, I have to remind him to set his hook as the bobber is no longer in sight. <laughs> yes. Or if it's a hopper, he has set it much too soon. Yes. Me too. Me too. Um, Jade, I don't know what that comment is. Maybe. Me too, Jade. See, we can't, if you guys reply to somebody, yeah. we can't see that reply. What was the first call was no fly zone. So no fly zone. I think Jeff might have won. Lucky hat, Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School. You farmed him, let him run, set the hook, and set, set, set. Set, set, set. Oftentimes we don't even get to say set the hook. No. We just say set, set, set. And then I look at Steven in the eyes and I say, set the hook, Steven. Okay, my fish count is just, yeah, well, Steve's killing it this year. So there's, there's number eight. There's the eight calls right there. Your other left, okay? Because sometimes people stand backwards in the back of the boat and they're fishing out the right side of the boat and then I can't figure it out. And I have to remind them that it is the other left. Um, Anybody Jen Lyle really may have really said, you want that fish or the next one. <laughs> okay, so two for four. Bingo. bingo. Barry Dickow got bingo. Barry. Well, 
This just means that we can play another bingo game when we come back because it's only 8.07. Barry, Barry, you come to Olds and you get your stuff, okay? Um, yes. I'll package it up. Number 088, he knows the drill. Check it out. And we're going to view his card. Look at that. Boom. So, folks, if you don't have a bingo card, that's what it looks like. Um, make this screen a little bigger. Yeah, so you get this and you get all your numbers and they're random and they're all there like that. So, nice. so nice. that's Barry's bingo. So Barry gets the first giveaway. We're going to watch our little bit of a show, a film, a video. And then we're going to come back and we're going to start. Um, actually, we're not. We're going to keep that where it is, okay? So, sorry, Barry. You can only win once tonight. But you can also <laughs> win the local gift card to Rocky Mountain Flash Shop. Uh, but keep your cards. Don't delete them. If you've already deleted them, please put these back on. Because when we come back, I'm just going to keep calling on this same card so that it goes a little quicker. So that uh, I believe Eric was needs one more. So, Eric, this might be for you. Yeah. Okay. Hold tight, friends. And uh, we're going to watch this little short film about the uh, Western Canada Fly Vision Guide School. And we will be right back with some more bingo, and I will show you what the next giveaway is. I told you once, I tell you twice the truth. You are my sin, my effervescent blues. My devil creeps the tears in my room. But I know, I know, I know, you know it's not true Through all the times you stay into his mouth Okay, my name is Russell Sloan. Uh, I signed up for guide school just basically because I want to learn a little bit more about the river, how to fish, how to man a boat, and just basically improve myself as a fisherman. Uh, Jason Doberstein. Well, you know, I, I actually am a fishing guide, but uh, I'm here to learn everything I can. I liken it to, uh, in the corporate world, you take training courses and that's what I'm here. I'm gonna try to learn everything I can from other fishing guides. Uh, I just can't imagine what there is to learn. You're gathering information from people that are willing to share. It's, it's well worth it. My name is Nolan Block. I chose guide school uh, looking to pursue uh, career in uh, as a fly fishing guide. Well, my name is Greg Riach. To me, it's it's not a business opportunity. It's more of a learn, listen, watch opportunity. And my goal is just to be more confident and a, and a better angler when I take people out in the boat wherever with me. My name's Jordan Saldana Jones, and uh, the reason for guide school is just because I have a passion for it. Um, I'm really lo looking to elevate myself as an angler and uh, just kind of see what happens. You never know. Um, maybe become a guide after. We'll see. My name is uh, David Sawyer. So I guide school. I wanted to basically learn how to oar a boat properly, and the most important thing for me is the safety of people. So that's uh, my big takeaway. Hey, my name is Craig Barnson. I was looking for an outlet where I can um, gain some skills and knowledge to safely get my drift boat down the river. Um, not so much looking to be a guide, but just looking to have the skills that they possess for uh, family and friend trips and that type of stuff. Uh, Trevor Goslin, why guide school? Um, well, obviously, most of us are here because we love fishing. Um, and the question is, can you, can you do more with that passion for fishing? Um, you know, are you willing to do this and can you, can you impart a skill and a lifestyle and an opportunity on other people? So that's what I'm here to see and get exposure to the industry to see if this is something I want to do uh, from that perspective. Mom and dad are safe in the boat or on shore. They need to stay there and that alone saves one life, right? Right? Like you're doggy paddling and you got nothing, right? So, 
It's one of those things where I've been trying to like figure out the perfect system. How much pressure you can put on it before that line breaks. Because you have to know that, whether it be 4X, 5X, 6X. Uh, I could see getting better at it and actually having somebody in the boat and putting them on fish and seeing that kind of thing and seeing the smiles on people's faces and the reactions and all that. 100% loved it. I'm really grateful that like, I feel like I may be fast-tracked in six days. Like I probably w learned in six days what would take me a few months of trial and error to learn. Yeah, so looking at rivers differently, so I feel like I can go somewhere else new, like just the stuff I've learned from you guys. Um, yeah, just where fish feed, what to look for, this and that. I, the, the aha moments were, um, the aha moments were, and we talked about this as I came in, the, the physical literacy you need to be able to row effectively. You know, you guys all got a role to play on the team. And I think you play it well, like you're very welcoming, man, to strangers and all that kind of shit, especially for somebody that is, uh, maybe a little introverted or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And the rest of you, you're just reinforce after reinforce after reinforce and positive reinforcement, you know? It's a huge thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, all right. All right, all right. Well, that's guide school, folks. That's, uh, cool. that's one of the guide schools we did last spring. Um, it's ironic because at the start of that video, it talks about uh, March 18th, where Dina Hinshaw was like, it's lockdown time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's March 18th. It is March 18th today. It's crazy. One year ago, year ago. we got slammed into that lockdown, and we didn't know how that we were going to continue. Uh, guide school was set for like end of April, just like this year. And... Uh, yeah, just a crazy, awesome group of people. We pivoted. We went to Zoom calls for a bit, two months maybe, yeah. until we were allowed to gather again, like the video said. And then we got into the river, and we spent six days together, and it was so awesome. The The growth that we get to see in, in grown men, um, it's, it's powerful. And so, like, you could see at the beginning of that, not everyone was like, I'm going to guide. Um, they just want to get better on the water, get better in a drift boat. And then the, the irony, at the end of it, after they had six days of awesome fun, they were like, I, this might be for me, I think. Yeah. I might, I might want to give it a try. So if you do want to sign up for Guide School, we have a couple spots left. Uh, we've had quite a few people sign up in the last probably five days. So there is a couple spots left. Uh, but once those spots are filled, then close the doors and we'll have to wait till September. Um, so check out our website. Uh, www.flyfishingbowriver.com slash guide school and uh, you also really want to check it out because one of the giveaways tonight is going to come from that website Ooh, just throwing it out familiar. there so <laughs> uh, check it out get get a hold of us even if you don't want to take it and you're just curious and you want to have a phone call uh, give us a shout okay okay so let's get back to this bingo game so if you are just joining in, like I believe somebody asked if, uh, oh, who asked this question? Trevor, did you miss bingo? You missed the first bingo. Um, but what we got to remember here is that obviously this new bingo setup is not working. So let me just do one sec. Because what we're going to do is just with the bingo that we had there, we're going to play off of that same card and we're going to take the next winner. So uh, let me just reset this program because obviously it does not work smoothly. <laughs> and uh, we'll get it popped up here for you guys so that if you are just joining in, you can jump back in. You can fill out those bingo cards. Um... You can fill out your bingo cards according to. Get a couple of people pretty close to winning this one. Yeah, so let's see if this will show back up. Yeah, so there they are. So there's the eight that Barry won. He won off of these eight. So fill these in quickly on your card because we're going to uh, add these back here. 
Um, yeah, so Adrian says in another life I'd bail over guide school for sure as my career schmolders. Um, just to speak to that, don't think of it as a schmoldering career, as a career change. Uh, there's a lot of other really awesome things that come out of guide school. And uh, yeah. people want to guide. People want to get better. They want to get more confident. Um, there's literally life-changing things that happen in guide school. Next call, number nine, is SOS. That's that's because that came from the show. So, yeah, let me know if you call bingo based on these nine things. You need all four corners. Um, I haven't even shown them what they're winning. Yeah, nobody knows. But what <laughs> you're still going to play. Looks <laughs> like call number 10 was bull trout. Bull trout. Bull okay. Trout. So this one comes, so uh, shore fishing stickers, uh, a little uh, a little fly box here from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. This comes with a, uh, a 7X leader. Um, we've added in a bunch of stickers from Fly Fishing Bow River Outfitters. We've got Love People Catch Fish. We've got I Fly Fish. We've got... Oh, eat it stickers based on the sandwiches we serve on our boats. We've got the eat it stickers based on the chocolate croissants we serve on our boat. And also a sticker from O'Neill's Fly Fishing. So you've got a big, huge sticker bundle. You've got this uh, fly box. And the coolest part about this package is you get another uh, leader. Let me pull this out because what I might need to do here is explain this to you. But this is a Monster Mountain Trout Streamer fly box. So it is a fly box filled with big streamers for bull trout, right? Funny that bull trout was just called. Uh, but yeah, so stickers. This is full of streamers, okay? Uh, probably a $50 value, exactly, because it says it right there. Um, and then you get this magnetic net holder for your backpack. Uh, super cool. You get some leaders, a couple leaders here, and uh, keychain. Remember key to move the protective surface on the front so that your keychain looks bright and shiny and all your friends don't think that you're weird. Bull trout, did anyone get it? Call one, two, and three. We're no fly zone. Lucky hat and Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School. Okay, do you guys all see that? Clousers. We've tied Clousers on this show a couple yep. times. A couple times, yeah. Next call is, is there any fish in this river? <laughs> right? That's a good question. Oftentimes, that is... Oh, let's make this a little bigger. Okay. Ruining all my nice graphics, but <laughs> such is life. Such is such life. Such is life. Uh, doop, 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 doop. Next call. Always Bingo. blame... Your guy. Oh, whoa. Michael. Michael McCottery. Bingo. Michael, send us your bingo ID card. And uh, let's see where you're at. We'll enter it up here. And it's the true form of the bingo. And then don't forget, there's a couple more giveaways. After we tie the pair post ant, there's a couple more giveaways. And they don't require bingo cards. They require something I said about five minutes ago. Okay, so now we've got a competition. Ben Armstrong has given us 009. So 067 is Mike's. And so Bull Trout, let him run. Uh, always blame your guide. Western Canada Fly Fishing Gold. So it looks like Bull Trout was. So Bull Trout was where. John Miller, everyone's a every, we got so many bingos here, folks. <laughs> okay, uh, bingo. What's a clouser? That's Shrendy little doesn't tie uh, clousers. None. Never tied a clouser. <laughs> uh, Michael 067. 067. Okay, so Bull Trout was there. Let's see what this one is. Um, you farmed him lucky hat, and are, are there any fish in this river? Okay, so Ben has them on bull trout. And then John Miller is 030. Stay with us, folks. Let's see what it's on. Um, always blame your guide. Okay. 
Yeah, it looks like Ben Armstrong is the winner on yeah, Bull Trout. Uh, if I'm, I'm 11, so I'm out. 12 for 12, but only two corners. Okay, so it looks like Ben Armstrong is the winner. Ben, nice you job, win. Man. Yeah, winner. Okay, that's I get killer, stressed man. when yeah, there's that's, ties. Yeah, that's, that's but, uh, high stakes right there. But that, folks, is how the game is played. And uh, we're going to go back to... These oh, guys. Good. Okay, so that's, that's a, bingo. It's a pretty if, awesome prize pack. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. Yeah. And uh, for Ben, he's local, so that's going to be really cool for him. Yeah. Uh, ben will probably drop that off. Probably drop that off either at the brewery or in Calgary. Save $4 million in shipping. <laughs> um, and then Barry, um, come to Olds, brother. You yeah. know where I'm at. And uh, Okay, so that's bingo. We got some more giveaways to do at the end of the show. If you guys are in for that, uh, and if you didn't get a bingo card, you can get one for next week. Mm -hmm. And your bingo cards that you had here also work for next week. So, Tim, what are we tying? What's the thread? All right. And how do we do that? So, guys, we are going to tie the pair post ant. So, if you've got our kits, you've already got one in there tied. You can take a peek at it. Give you a little bit of an idea what we're gonna do. Oh, sorry, just, where's your vice? I'm just switching out my jaws because I got. So you're gonna, sir, sir, you're camera. gonna need a vice. There we go. Okay. I needed to mess with the uh, the camera angle a little bit. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna tie on the midge uh, the midge jaws on my Norvice for this is just a little bit smaller uh, fly, and you want to be able to get down into the bend of the hook. So I'm gonna do it on here, just as it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to secure this. This is going to be a size, I believe this is a 14. There we go. Good. Um, a size 14. This ant looks like, actually I should put that in there for you first so you can see that. This is what the Parapost ant looks like. Okay. So we're doing an ant. Um, we're building up a yarn body. Um, well, yarn, this is like a, uh, what do they call this? Oh, like a mole yarn. So we've, it's all peeled off. You've got a ton of it in your kit. You've got enough to tie about 50,000 of these flies. Um, and then we're just gonna do our post. So we've done, a, we've done a post fly already this year. We did the parachute atoms. So this is gonna be repeating the same process that we did with that post is what we're gonna do for this one. We're gonna put a little bit of a hot spot um, pair of post wing so we can uh, see it. Everybody likes a little bit different color. White is good a lot, but I actually really do like the orange. Um, it, it shows up quite nicely in the water. Um, and then we're just gonna, yeah, we're gonna use a hackle to keep it up. So this is just a design that's meant to look like um, an ant. So we're going to build a little bit more of a bulbous uh, body section on the back, a little bit smaller on the front, and then we work from there. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our hook and our vise. And I'm going to tie with the same thread I did on the last one. I'm not worried about building up bulk here um, because I'm actually going to be using the thread to apply this other yarn. <clears throat> so I'm going to use my UTC 140 on this fly as well. You could easily use uh, 70 and you'd be just fine as well. I'm going to start my thread up behind the eye and I'm going to work some thread wraps all the way back and into the bend this time. Grab my scissors, put them down there they are. I'm going to work my thread back up in just a nice open spiral so I'm not building up a ton of bulk on there. And now I want to leave my thread roughly um, between one and two eye lengths. So if you could imagine the length of that eye lengths of that behind um, it's a bit of an eyeball thing but that's where I'm gonna stick my um, I'm gonna tie in my pair post and we're gonna get that ready before we move back to build up our, our uh, body so we gave you some of this pair post material I'm gonna double it over I like a little bit um, thicker I guess we could say uh, more full looking wing so I'm gonna double that so I have twice as much material to work with now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this around my thread and we're gonna prep this post so I'm gonna bring it down and tie it in. So all I've done is wrap it around my thread and then I can bring it in where I want it. I'm gonna bring it in right there. Take a few thread wraps. I'm gonna have to hold on to the post for a second until I get it secure. And they can be a little unruly at first. They kind of seem like they wanna move around you. But what I wanna do right away is I wanna tar start taking some wraps around just the post. All Not right, Eric's hook. got a piece out. Eric, we appreciate you tuning in. See you, Bear. Uh, he tells us a story to make us jealous about his buddy caught 105 trout Monday morning um, in uh, Tennessee. 
Wow. And then he finally caught 10 and 15 minutes. So that sounds like fishing Woo. in a barrel. Is that how they say that? That yeah, sounds fish, uh, like shooting fish in a barrel. Shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah, yeah. Bobbing for apples in a toilet. <laughs> well, I don't know why you'd be in a toilet. Uh, you never know. Well, see you later, Eric. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. So I'm going to keep taking some thread wraps only around the post. Okay, and I'm, what I'm doing is I want to create a nice solid. And you can see I'm grabbing with my fingers every time I go by, creating a nice solid base. And I'm gonna, what I'm trying to do is start wrapping up the post as right. I build Mark, enough Mark's structure. got a piece out too. I think we missed him. Sorry, Mark. All right, Mark. See, but as I, uh, as we build some kind of solid structure to the base, I can start taking thread wraps farther up the post, which is what I'm gonna do here. Start working it up. As my thread started to come, it started to flatten out. I want to cord it up. I'm going to move up. And I don't need to go all the way up right now to where I actually need to be because I'm not going to know exactly until I get my other materials on here. What I want to do is create that nice post, nice and solid, like so. Um, what I'm going to do is because I, I like to do this right away is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to prep my hackle as well. I'm going to get my hackle tied on this post and then I'm gonna move back down the body and work from there. So I just gave you some grizzly hackle in there. Um, I'm gonna peel off some of those bottom Tim, fibers. Tim, the question of the day is not from the audience, but I've heard it and been asked many times is why do they call it grizzly hackle? Is it literally pulled from the grizzly's bum? Yes, that's exactly why right. it's uh, And I bet you Jen Lyle, did, <laughs> Jen Lyle is the one who got it. Yep. It only it. works if you get it off a living bear. Yeah, you can't get it off a dead one, it doesn't count. Is That's that so viz <laughs> on top? Yes, that is that is your indicator. The That's viz. Uh, a poly yarn. Poly yarn is what this is made out of, parapost uh, material. Alternately, like this, I, I'm not using this right now, but this stuff here, this is just a polyurethane. Hold back, Tim. This um, is episode 712. Yeah, rope, I think, is what it was, and I just unfurled it, like pulled it all apart. Oh, yeah. And it makes great material, and it obviously... Okay, folks, stop the show. Jim James William Crawford, his concert is over, and oh. he is here. Start over. Start start over. Okay, <laughs> folks. Welcome back to Thursday. Night. Tim, you me. Got to put on your costume. I got to get my keyboard. <laughs> okay. Well, we will ex we will extra yeah, with that outfit just because Jim missed it. Just because he did. So, guys, we have an underside. So we have the dull side of the hackle, and then we have the shiny side on on uh, on the opposite side. Obviously, Jim, your SOS doesn't count right now. <laughs> no, it doesn't count. Sorry, but I'm going to tie the dull side against the post. Okay. So I'm just going to come lay this with the dull side facing the post. And I need to give leave enough of that stem so that I can wrap around the stem on the post. So I don't wanna tie that with the fibers right close to the hook. I need to leave a little bit of a gap in it. Okay, so I need to leave a little bit of space, not right down, okay? Remember, we still have some giveaways. Giveaways are coming. So I'm gonna tie that in just in front of the post and then I'm gonna quickly go right to the post and I'm gonna secure that hackle all the way up the post, just where I had put those other wraps. Make sure it's on there real good. And then work my thread back down again. <laughs> Trevor said, Jim just got a record SOS at 0.325 seconds into joining. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Trevor, if you know James William Crawford, he can't get his thread into bobbin. No, <laughs> that's, that's a fact. It's all just a joke, but it's true, <laughs> but it's true. But it's a true joke. I'm going to take my thread, guys. I'm going to bring it back and into that bend a little ways. Okay, it's not super deep into it, but kind of right on the cusp of where it goes over the edge. And we're going to create the, the appearance that an ant isn't just a flat body, where it, almost like it's been injured and it's um, starting to curl its body in. Like, it, you know, if you stepped on an ant and it curled up a little bit. Okay, so that kind of appearance. So I, I'm gonna I, take... There's a difference, Tim. I'm 250 pounds, <laughs> you're 12 pounds. When I step on an ant, it doesn't curl up. Uh, it's sorry. It's sorry. Just, uh, I, absorbed into the concrete. I have not had that experience. Oh, okay, well, for those of us lighter folks, I'm going to grab little bits of this and I'm going to make a dubbing noodle, okay? So I'm grabbing little pieces. And as we've done many times in the past, remember your fingers are only supposed to go in one direction, not back and forth. That doesn't do anything for us. If you put a little moisture in your fingers, lick them, get some COVID, it also works uh, to help kind of secure it down a bit. I'm not doing anything as far as a specific length or a specific amount that I'm putting on. SOS for me. <laughs> oh, spilled the beer. No good. So guys, then what we're going to do is we're going to start wrapping. And I want to create this nice little 
bulb or little ball back here that's going to represent the back portion of the ant's body. So I'm kind of going to, you know, do some wraps in front of it, on top of it, but I don't want to spread it out. I want it to look like, I want it to look quite circular, okay? So if I get it and it starts to slide off the edges, then maybe I went with too much, but I keep just like that right there, how it slid off, and then bring it back. I want to try to keep it right on top. Make sure I get that nice thick body appearance. But what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna, as soon as I get that wrapped, my last wrap on it, like so, I'm gonna start wrapping my thread forward to the post. And there you can see we got that nice kind of bulbous little body at the back. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat that process up here, but we're not gonna make um, this one as big. We're gonna wrap around the post to make it look like the front portion of the body. And then we're going to go up the post and kind of finish off this fly with um, how we normally would work on a post, which we're gonna wrap the hackle and we'll finish it. So I'm gonna wrap on both sides of this post, just like this. And now I want to remember that I want this little ball to be slightly smaller than the, than the back one. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that off. And I wanna leave my thread um, on this as we prepare to go into the post. I wanna wrap and leave it on the far side of the fly. So now it's close to you because I'm gonna tip my fly over um, and get it reoriented in my vise. And what I want <clears throat> is for it to be on the far side of the fly so that when I do that, it's actually gonna hang off the post. Right now it's hanging off the hook. But as soon as I take this, I'm gonna flip it vertical and put it back in my vise. Now you can see that that thread is now hanging off the post itself. And that's where I want it to finish up this fly. Now, it, it, I do think I have enough room here for that hackle. You don't need a ton of room in that post, but I'm gonna take a few wraps up the post just to make sure it's good and secure, okay? And then I'm gonna bring my thread back to the bottom of the post. Make sure I got any of those materials that are kind of in the way out. Now, what I like to do is I like to come in here with my UV resin. Um, this is gonna use that super thin stuff, that bone dry. All I like to do is come in and put a touch on the post. And I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm not gonna harden it yet with my light. I'm just gonna leave it there. So now when I wrap my hackle around that post, um, if something slips in the process of doing uh, my whip finish, which can be difficult-ish um, on the stem, then that hackle is actually gonna be still gonna be secured. So when I pull this hackle to get it to start ready to wrap, I want the dull side or the underside of the hackle to be faced up towards the post, okay? And that's gonna make the hackle fibers sit almost cupping or uh, reaching upwards, which is how I want this to sit. I don't want them to point down. That's gonna kind of impede the ant itself. Okay, so I'm gonna start taking some wraps. How many wraps you do isn't really important. What we do wanna do is cover, um, cover up as much of that post as we can. So once I feel like I've got that post fairly covered, I'm gonna come in here with my thread and I'm gonna secure it, do a couple wraps. Like so, I'm gonna reach in here and clip out that uh, the stem. And once I got that clipped out, now I'm going to take my light and cure that because I know that I've wrapped on that post where I put all, right. all that resin. <laughs> got it clean, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Cleaned up most of that. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, Ben, your giveaway is gonna come with a lot of beer. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be sticky like beer. Okay, now guys, we are almost done. All we're gonna do is we're gonna whip finish this and then we're gonna be good, we're gonna be done. So how we whip finish on this post is no different than as if we were gonna whip finish on the hook itself. That's actually why I reorient this because it makes it easier when you're tying these. And I used to think that I could hero this and didn't need to do, I could whip finish did you, kind of Did you get the post. SOS from Joel? I uh, just see it now. Okay, well. Hopefully Joel, we haven't uh, <laughs> Sorry, had I, I, the moderator was uh, cleaning up beer that was <laughs> yeah. spilled all over the place. All over the place. So let us know, Joel, if you still need some help or you need to, uh, what an idea what to do. Uh, I'm gonna come in here and whip finish here, guys. So all I'm gonna do when I'm whip finishing is trying not to trap any of those hackle um, fibers. So I'm pretty delicate and careful about it. Still gonna do a three or four turn whip finish. If you did it well, you shouldn't have too much that's uh, tangled up in that. And you can see that that hackle extends right down um, to the top of that front little body portion. And if you've done it right, it's gonna look pretty real. I'm gonna come in here and snip out my thread. 
And the last thing we have to do is cut our uh, pair wow. post. Wow. And how much you like to leave up top is totally up to you. The fish isn't seeing it. I obviously wouldn't leave this much because it's not going to float properly, um, but enough that you can see. So I'm actually going to reorient this in my vise. Okay, simple so pattern here, guys. But I think what we one. need to do, seeing that you have to work in the morning, um, I will come over there to that camera and show everybody how to take a hook out with uh, mono. Sure. But before we do that, because there will be blood ish, because yes. it's coming out of you. What? It's coming out of <laughs> yeah. me? Yeah. Ugh. Uh, where are we at? Let's see how many shares we got. If you guys oh, want to see me yank a hook out of Tim's forearm, then you better start uh, 52 sharing. shares. Get to 100. Get 100 shares, and we will yank a hook out of Tim's forearm. So, Goody. I think something to understand here is when is a good time to fish uh, the ant is always. Yeah, summer for sure. Mountain streams, epic. Hot, dry. Hot, dry. I think the thing with an ant is that it's very hard to see. So, we good? Everyone sees the ant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will do it. Okay, so let's go back here to. We're good. Everyone's got their ant tied. And, uh, oh, I just got the joke here. Someone said, What's a good time to fish the ant? And then someone said, When your uncle's out of town. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> and I believe it was none other than Doug Cook. Oh, wow. That was good. When uncle's out of town. That's what. <laughs> that's <laughs> I don't good. even know how to answer that stuff, but. Uh, Take one for the team. Mike Hawkins is on vacation. He just apologized Thanks, to Mike. you and not to me. Yeah. But uh, well. I believe last week he said that he was taking his first vacation in five years or something. That's awesome. Um, Where are you at? Uh, he, I think, believe he's like Santa Fe or Mexico, me. I don't know. Some, anyways, it made me hungry after he shared a few of the food posts. But uh, okay, yeah. we will show you how it's done. No numbing lotion. I just spilled <laughs> beer all over this table. If you guys could, if you're ever up and old, give me a shout. We'll show you. Uh, maybe it looks a little uh, polished on this side of things, but behind the scenes, uh, Santa Ray, Santa Fe. I think you meant. So. Cool. Okay, so that's the ant. That's the dog Spratly. Uh, the ant is a great pattern to fish. So what I was saying before, because I got sidetracked. You got sidetracked? Sure. Yeah, I got sidetracked. Um, stimulator. A lot of people are like, yeah, that's my searching pattern. I'm going to tell you a secret. <laughs> don't do it. Huh. <laughs> Why don't you show them what we're, some of the stuff we're working on for the lucky fly box for episode 20? Because I'm starting to pack at least the dry fly box there's just just a few yes quinn drift out west fly fishing has been here um this thing is going to be loaded so far there's 50 dry flies in there we're going to have that thing almost at 250 um yeah, yep, be a lot of dry flies in there. That's one of the big giveaways. We have all of the flies that we've tied for Thursday Night Live um, are in another fly box. We have 20 some dozen streamers. 20 some dozen streamers. Think about that. Do someone, the math, folks. someone, someone besides Cam do the math. <laughs> um, so, what is that? So, we call that the lucky fly box. So, on the episode 20, we're going to launch it before episode 20. Um, yeah, Trevor wants them barbed or he wants his shares back. So what we do is we just simply uh, kind of throw it out there. And if you want to donate to the show, it's uh, $5. And $5 gets you your $5 donation gets you uh, an entry. Mm -hmm. and you can put up whatever, 20, 25 entries. Uh, it's very common. And uh, yeah, so every time you donate, you get your name. Boop. And uh, then on the episode 20, we did it last year, and we're working on some really big things. We got um, a couple fly rods. I, yeah. I, I don't know how much I want to say, but. I know. It's uh, going to be worth it. Let's put it that way. Worth it. There's probably going to be like four or $5,000 in in 
I mean, those streamers alone, if you were to sell your streamers, would yeah. be way up there. So stay tuned with that, folks, because that this is episode 13. We're, We're going to hit to 20. So four, we got like six or seven. Like, oh, my goodness, it comes so fast and it goes so it fast does. and time flies. And time flies <laughs> quick. So, yeah, let's let's do this. Um, I'm going to come over. Let's see. It, this freaking desk is all sticky. <laughs> let's see that. where we're at for shares. If we hit 100, we're going to yank a hook out. We're at 90, so I guess nobody wants to really see nope. that. That's good, uh, guys. 99 is the perfect number. Yeah, Ryan, 20 dozen. There's actually more yeah, than 20 dozen. More. Um, but Conservative. I'm not sure what we're doing with the rest. But Yeah. Um, and now we've just donated a float trip. Whew. Mr. There's a float trip donated. Amazing. So you can also, one of the names pulled out of the hat, local or travelers, whatever you want to do. There's going to be a float trip that's donated. Um, so Troy Tracy, uh, we haven't put it up, but it'll be on our website and we'll announce that. And it'll probably be on episode 18. It's just, it's a logistical nightmare if we were to open it right now. And so we kind of keep that down to the last couple weeks. And uh, we it, we will advertise it quite a bit. Yeah. So yeah, last year we gave away one of our fly Kia tables that were custom painted by one of the artists in Calgary. We gave away the entire like so. When Tim's tying the fly, he'll probably tie five to ten or de you know depending on how complex it is of that pattern before he ties it on the show. So even if you just grab back the Nancy P's, um, just just one of the streamers this isn't even a part of the the 20 streamers but yeah so this is just kind of what happens is he ties all these these flies and then we just keep filling up fly boxes and then we're giving them away you go to a fly shop those streamers are eight to twelve dollars um that's it's just that's the just season. yeah that's just that's a small portion we're working with some more people trying to get some uh some really awesome things uh, you're willing to make Tim cry for 10 shares. Yes. <laughs> uh, you cannot, you can share it more than once. You can share it to groups. We're not trying to, we're not trying to spam everyone. We're just, just having fun at that. Uh, but yeah. So now there's a donated flow trip. So, uh, you can head out Oof. with one of our guides. He's going to donate a flow trip for that. Um, do you like a certain color of post for bluebird days? Uh, uh, yeah, this one actually. This one, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say this is. See, the thing with one. white is, and I like I white is even a super common color of an indicator, um, but white on flies, it's okay. But if you get any chop in your water, or if you get any bubbles in the water that you're fishing, the, the let's say you're fishing a foam line or something, that fly disappears because white on white, right? It just doesn't. You can't see it. Um, there's amber color or a um, this orange or even a red really pops on a on a bluebird day um, especially if you're fishing in a little bit of a foam yeah, line this, or something this like own that orange is good i like i like it yeah so, so a, a key thing you could do is uh tie dual post have an orange and a white or you could do a uh, red and a yellow and okay. then they show up kind of different um yeah. No, so uh, Jen, what he was asking was eight to twelve dollars Canadian for streamers is about what we pay up here. Yeah, uh, we're about four dollars for a dry fly. <laughs> eight to twelve uh, maple syrup. Eight, yeah, eight to, <laughs> eight to twelve. Yes, and Trevor. and all of the giveaways on this show do we do ship? We ship wherever. So yeah, um, yeah. So let's do this. I'm gonna try to throw up this camera. Just wait. We got to give these away first. Yeah. Okay. Mysterious envelopes. <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> that was the most pathetic yep. reveal I've wow. ever done. It was good. Real good. So what's in here is a $25 gift card uh, to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Nice. Un unfortunately, it only can be used in the store. Um, so if you do jump in to win this one, make sure that you can travel up here yeah. and uh, use it appropriately. So I guess what I want to ask you guys is <laughs> what I want to do. What do you want to ask them? Um, so we did talk about where you would find the answer to this question. And the first person who can tell me what are the dates for the first spring guide school of 2021 will win 
will win. You can find it on our website. You'll win both of both of them. You're getting fifty dollars. Both Epic. of these gift cards, okay? Fifty dollars to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. You've got to be able to use it in store. It's not good online. There it is. And Claude wins. So Claude, uh, April twenty third, twenty fifth. And uh, so, Claude, send a, an email to tnl at flyfishingbowriver.com, and we'll get them. We bucks. might even just throw your name on them and put them at the fly shop. So when you head in there, when we'll you come there. up to Olds, uh, you got $50 at rockymountainflyshop.net. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to – I'm just trying to figure out how these cam the cameras are going to work. <laughs> um so if we do this, Tim, hold yes. tight. We're going to pull a hook out. Why don't you zoom out of that one a bit and then... Yeah, I think that's... I'm going to stay... The hardest part is putting it in, not taking it out. Well, what, we're me, still doing a hook, right? Let me choose a <laughs> hook. Yeah. <laughs> I get to choose the size of the hook oh, that's going in my arm. Yes, you do. All right. What I'm going to do is choose the size of the... <laughs> of the... Of the... Uh, the, th the uh, monofilament line? Yeah. Okay, what do I want to have taken out? Oh, we can maybe do this, and we can see you too, and then we'll see me over there. And so, bear with us, folks, because I'm gonna have to talk into Tim's mic. And uh, I'm 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 actually trying to remember. <laughs> how, don't tell me you're yeah. trying to remember how to do this. Okay. Okay, so I just cut off myself a. Uh, yep. Put oh, it in. Oh man, this is the worst part. It's hard because I know it's coming. If I don't know it's coming, it's not hard. Ah. Ah, come on. It's in there. Now I'm like worried I'm going to slip slip and it's going to like go out of sight. It's okay. I know. I know somebody ah. who can help. Okay, that's okay, up folks, So this is now. a really, uh, this is a really handy tip here. Um of what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna come over there, I gotta unplug my, my, uh, you can hear. <laughs> you can hear me talk. He'll talk you through it, through my mic. So you would think that you never have to use this, but if you- should have put it the other way. Well, geez, sorry. I can't now. So, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm just making a loop. Just making a loop. Ow, then, don't move well, that I, thing I around. I understand. Damn. Okay. So he just made a loop around and he's riding it right up into the hook bend. Right in the hook bend here, okay? Ah. And now what we want to do is push down on the eye of the hook. Okay, and then on the count of three. Oh, there it goes. It's gone. Yanked it out. It's gone just it's like gone. that. <laughs> and that's how you do it. And actually, it is very painless coming out. Going in sucks, but yeah, um, yeah. It's actually it's super effective and like that had a barb on it still. Yeah. Right. So, so that's... remember, you you just take some floral or mono, just make a loop around the hook of the of the the bend of the hook, and then push down, hold down on the eye of the hook. And then just pop it out. Yeah. I don't even know. Is it bleeding? Like it? Nope. Didn't bleed at all. It's it's. Uh... Yeah, that's a good question, Steve. Um, I actually have taken one out of an ear, and yes, it works the same. Like the dog's ear. In the face, yeah. I just took that, it out of my that dog. Was, it, yeah. That was a bad one. Um, but yeah, like anywhere. That's actually really common. Is like the the neck, the side of the neck. If someone gets a breeze that comes over their shoulder or in their back. Um, but anywhere, if you stick it in, the the key thing is when you get that loop around um, the hook itself, you gotta push down on. Um, that eye of the hook into the body part that it's yeah, on because it, it tips the angle out and it allows that barb to go right back in the path that came out hopefully if you're fishing without a barb you don't even need to do what we're doing you literally just pulls out but sometimes on a barb it just leaves that little bit of something on there um, and so it, it does require that to get it out and some people don't want you to slowly work on it they just want a quick pull like one two three band-aid off and it's gone um, it's super effective. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> missing it. You can do it again. So, um, <laughs> no. you can rewatch the show once it's done. <laughs> I've heard uh, it but yeah, that, again. that is uh, super, super handy to know. Uh, some of the things we teach in guide school is just quite simply something like that. 
Um, because hooks get caught in people and oftentimes um, they get caught in your face and your client's head and people think you have to right, race to the hospital but uh, that trick works pretty simple and uh, it is painless. It's probably more painful the thought of it yeah. or like, like Tim had to slowly uh, put the hook in like that but uh, practice it on yourself because it's something that is very, very, very handy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Cam, no pain, but awkward to explain in a meeting. He had a fly in his beard on the overnight <laughs> trip. Okay, so speaking of Cam, um, Tim, tell a joke. Tell a joke? Uh, so I'm not going to tell a joke, but I will talk to you because I don't tell jokes. Have we got it, the uh, Elaine, Doug? Yeah. Where, did he yeah, already give a joke? He did. I didn't see it. I was too caught up in the joke about um, the Cayman Islands. Let's not go back to that one. So Cam did something super awesome, him and his daughter. Um, they created a, a piece of art for us for our studio. So Cam and his family are very much uh, outdoorsy family. They One of the big sports that they've done a lot of is skiing. Um, so skiing is a huge part of, uh, has been a huge part of their life. And so they have some extra, we'll say skiing gear hanging around. So they did this uh, this version of some art for us on a ski. So I'm going to see if I can get it up here, folks. Uh, okay, so Cam's daughter painted this on an old ski for us to put up in the studio. Okay, and it was based off of our overnight trip we did with Cam last year. And then, I don't know, that's, that's, that's Stonefly. That's epic. I'm trying to trying to do it justice here, Cam. Uh, <laughs> anyways, that is that's incre incredible, folks. That's so um, good. So cool. Yeah, the it's whole a great job. the whole sunset, the whole thing. Uh, we did a two day overnight float on the Bow River, and uh, we're gonna get that mounted up on the wall here. So that actually showed up pretty good. Yeah, it did. that it showed up good. pretty good. So that's Chloe did that, yeah. and. Uh, uh, cherish that's that's stuff that cherish uh, you know Chaz's uh, big hook that he forged for us stuff like this guys uh, it, that's super cool super awesome yeah incredible art is uh, everybody's version of art and is then and that's what's fun I also wanted to show you a piece of art <laughs> I don't know yeah. if you guys subscribe to the fly fusion magazine but this my friends is your friend Tim Hepworth. Look at that form. That handsome guy. Look at that guy. <laughs> it's a different kind of fly rod review. So if you get fly fusion, check it out, guys. That's Tim on page this one. <laughs> <laughs> More importantly, who took the photo? It wasn't me, obviously. Oh, the photo's irrelevant. It's, uh, the, it's the artist. Yeah, the artist who took it's the photo. It's the artist at work inside of the photo that matters. <laughs> Uh, so a scratch, maybe yeah um there it is that's kind of we're five we're five minutes ahead of the nine o'clock schedule that never happens yeah <laughs> that oh, it's the that pair post ant was uh it's good and quick was super cool so um yeah if you want one of those skis i'm pretty sure chloe's not taking um maybe she is taking orders cam maybe. talk to us so let us know uh, but that thing is going to be cherished. We're just trying to figure out how to put it up. Uh, Tim is yes, <laughs> the center fold. with a stiff bent rod yeah. in the center fold. Stiff bent rod. Um, you can't see his face, but that is him. That was in December. We went fishing with Russ and caught some whitefish. Yep. Uh, when you buy a gift card from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, can they deliver it by email? Um, they will Tell have me. to answer that Let one. Okay, so it looks like Doug threw out a joke. He said, what comes out of your nose at 150H? A Lamborghini. <laughs> I got to get, I got to get the do, do, do. Yeah. Or, my, or you just, my... or you just pull that out. I, I think what we should do is uh, pop the commercials and then we got a treat for you guys when we come back here. So give us one minute. We'll be right back. With the amount of time we spend in front of our vices, don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors? that can make the cut. Oh,
lot of great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. We all deserve the right to stay organized, no matter what or where your space is. Your fly Kia table will turn any space into a well-organized fly tying realm. Own your domain. Well, folks, that's another Thursday Night Live. Almost. We got one more, one more segment. We ain't letting you guys go at the two-hour mark. We've never let you guys go at the two-hour mark, so why would we let you guys go tonight? Are you wearing shorts? Because I can see up them. Oh, yeah, I can. Is that your leg coming out of your shorts, or are you just happy the show is almost over? <laughs> I'm never happy that the show is almost over. Because another six days until Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Russell Sloan says he doesn't put people on white fish. Then tell me, Mr. Sloan, what do you do? If Mr. Sloan doesn't put people on white fish, <laughs> then he's just simply not putting them on fish. <laughs> Oh yeah, folks, I know that you guys are probably still here because you just it's like a train wreck. You just can't stop watching. So before we get into the wins tonight, we just have to thank some of our sponsors. And uh, first of all, we'd like to thank the Rocky Mountain Fly Shop for all the giveaways, all the giveaways. They keep, we got the tickle trunk, it's still full. We got about six or seven more uh, episodes left. And then when we hit 20 folks, it is a sad, sad day because we won't see any of you guys until about next year and about October. No, this year still, but... But anyways, that's about it for my rhyme. <laughs> and, uh, if you guys are looking for a traveling uh, band... <laughs> oh, I, just, I just simply can't... <laughs> I just can't even take it anymore, folks. You're I, welcome. Uh, quite simply, Tim and the Casio. <laughs> I just have to so say good. that. Uh, uh. Uh, so don't request songs because we actually can't play anything that we haven't made up on our own. No and, man. Uh, why do you look so far away from your camera today? Oh, maybe because you're... I had no room yeah. for my, for my uh, for synthesizer. Your, for your, oh, yeah, the synthesizer. So, uh, no, it's not Stairway to Heaven. It is literally Escalade to Hell. <laughs> the, uh, that's how we do it here, folks. Uh, we just like to have fun. Uh, really, if you can't laugh at yourself, then who can you laugh at? And the answer that's is true. probably many people, but you should, you, should learn to, you should learn to love yourself, laugh at yourself, and uh, the world's just a better place. And that's what's fun about Thursday Night Live mm -hmm. is we just tie some flies and we have no agenda. But it all comes down to this. We love people and we catch fish. We yeah. try to catch fish. And <laughs> they do try. go in that order because uh, sometimes we can't always catch fish. But no. uh, yeah, so I just want you guys to uh, share with us what was your win for the week. And we're going to share with you guys first. And then we're going to start throwing your comments um, on the screen. Here's the Tim. Rock and roll. You're up first, brother. All right, guys. What are my wins for the week? Well, this is obviously my biggest win every week. I'm very thankful to be here. Uh, thankful for you guys. Um, on top of this, had some cool stuff happen for me this week. Um, it was warm. I got to spend some time with my kid out ice fishing. Um, you know, yesterday, oh, yeah, it was yesterday. I woke up <coughs> and Ren just didn't want to go ice fishing. But she was determined we were going down to the Bow River and I fought her on it, I fought her on it. It's like, it's a long ways to go. But sometimes you just gotta let go of our things. And uh, I took her down there for the day. Um, ended up meeting up with an old friend on the river, like really renewed my spirit, something that I didn't realize I needed as much as I did. Um, caught some fish, got to hang out with her. 
serious win. Can't even say how much of a win. So for me, that's my my big stuff this week. Big wins. Yeah. How about you? So for me, um, maybe you guys don't know, but one of my passions is uh, films and videos. And uh, uh, had a pretty cool job this week getting to uh, shoot some branding content for a pretty cool company in Calgary. Some... Uh, uh, lady entrepreneurs who are really killing it and that was a lot of fun we got to go in we got to uh, walk them through their vision of what they wanted in the films and uh, so I walked through that this week uh, I met with a couple people on Monday morning and uh, you guys wanted apparel so apparel is on its way and uh, not only are they good at what they do they're absolutely aligned with being super awesome people and uh, we're just working out designs and stuff and that stuff's gonna uh, come soon here but uh, that was pretty cool just just when you get to meet like-minded people that they have nothing to do with fishing they're out of Florida uh, they're just really awesome people uh, this the Sammy superstar Sammy cool these shirts showed up today. We ordered those. Uh, I put the link in the Facebook comments. If you guys want to order some Sammy Cool shirts, uh, feel free to support one of my buddies. Um, he's out in New Jersey, John. Maybe he's close to you. And uh, just he's just killing it, man. He's just crushing his dreams, living the life, live streaming, um, doing the YouTube thing. And I think he's only 17. I might have mentioned that. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of... Um, I had a really good week. I had a fantastic week. And tomorrow we might go fishing. We're just kind of checking out the weather as far as the wind goes. Uh, but now it's about you guys. So tell us what was your win for the week. Share with us. Uh, Joel caught a big redfish on the Choctawakachi Bay. Nice. A dream of redfish. Troy, I love that. Cool. Troy Tracy says, my win was discovering you guys. <laughs> We could, uh, uh, can't even say how much that means to us, man. It's uh, Troy. Awesome. Troy, where are you from? Are you? Where is your location? Uh, we love we love new people here um, because you can see that the group of people here is like minded. They cheer you guys on when you share your wins. Um, Roman says my win was uh, got out, caught some nice fish, and had a kick-ass week at work, and got some fireplace installed. So. Nice. That's that's winning. That's winning. It's just going over the victories that we had of the week and uh, sharing them. So you guys are sharing them. Had the goal of running 10Ks and I did it. First time ever for me. Feeling really good about my fitness. Uh, bye yes. bye dad bod. Uh, Adrian following that on Facebook. It's inspiring. Uh, it's super cool to see. So keep crushing those goals. Uh, Tim, you put Ross Seller to shame at the Casio. Well, <laughs> Tim doesn't want to put anyone to shame. No. Uh, but he did. He definitely. Where, where's that sound effect again? Uh, Chaz said, "Reminded why dads matter. Uh, check out Dick Hoyt. Such an inspiration. I'll yeah. miss him, but his story will last forever. A dad who matters. Uh, that's the dad who pushed his son around at the Boston Marathon in a wheelchair for 20, 15 or 20. Uh, unbelievable story. And Chaz, um, if you guys know Chaz's story, that that really hits home with him." And it's super inspiring. And uh, uh, Richard passed away today. So a legend, a true legend. Uh, Jen Lyle, great to meet you. And I'll remember that day forever. Not sure where that came in, but uh, awesome show tonight, guys. Good night, everyone. Good night. Uh, Mr. Bruce Cole, my wins are that my dad got his first dose of the vaccine and the daughter confirmed she is. Oh, yeah. First we got in Morgan April. in for the float trips in April. Nice. Mm, cookies and whitefish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Craig Jones says this is this episode was a win. Thanks for the great times uh, and huge laughs. Certainly makes the week well worth it. Plus, I get to take my girls out camping and ice fishing this weekend. Biggest win of the week. Amazing. Fantastic, Craig. And by any chance, you're going to get donuts on Saturday? <laughs> yeah. I haven't decided. Sean said he made it through time change, PTIs, and St. Paddy's Day with COVID issues. Was the longest, most tiring week as a teacher ever, but oh my, he got Riverfest. Got Riverfest, though. I need some Riverfest yeah, in my life. Touché. Ryan said that his win is his daughter's second birthday this weekend, 
And me and my wife refurbished the dollhouse for it, and it looks pretty sweet. And I bet you she's going to be absolutely thrilled. Uh, great job, Brian. Scott says, win-win, ice hockey and ice fishing with my little boys. Super cool that uh, uh, I'm not sure where Scott's at, but uh, we're getting some activities going back here, and the kids are uh, super happy to be doing that. Steve said, great show, guys. Keep on keeping on. Uh, appreciate Steve, Steve joining in, and uh, we love that you're here. Corey ordered his new Hydra boat this week. Ooh, Looking forward to getting it. Welcome well, to the nice. family. A um, couple more new hides coming this way, and I would love to show you guys a picture of mine, but oh my goodness. Maybe next week. Uh, Davis Kimball bought my first fly rod this week, so that's oh, absolutely man. epic. Welcome. Uh, round of applause, everybody. We say round of clicks. Round of clicks, welcome to the forever uh, addiction. Your life is over. <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. In a good way, yeah. Uh, Alex, hitting the river tomorrow. Awesome. Super awesome. Nathaniel, I started a new job today with a seven on, seven off, so we can fish more. That's awesome. that's a really good schedule. That's so. not a bad schedule at all. Good for you, man. Um, Troy Tracy is in New Brunswick. Oh, that's nice. the greatest people on the planet, 100%. Yeah. Uh, this coming weekend's weather is a win and uh, in New Hampshire to fish. So nice. that's really good. It looks like it's warming up everywhere. Jeff got my COVID shot Monday. Let's get this planet healthy and open the border. Yes, absolutely. Um, I don't think that's shared. No. Nope. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so that's Jeff. Uh, Drift Out West is peacing out. So long, Super. brother. Super. Jason had an epic win tonight while watching landing my first long-term editing gig. Congrats, awesome, Jace. Dude. That's, That's freaking awesome. awesome. Killer. Um, uh, Patty Poirier got on the water. Also, daughter's hockey team is on to play championships. Well, Killer. round of clicks for Poirier's daughter. Let's get some wins, folks. Let's get a real win, a real victory. Uh, Jen says, I got to officially hire a new employee to help support my business, my community. Also fishing with Cam and Dana, sweet fish bud. Yeah. Cam, he's talking about he's you. Talking about you. Yes, good stuff coming out of the Lyle family right there. Mark said, my best friend's daughter's kitty uh, went missing on the weekend and my heart broke. We drove for hours and she found the cat Sunday night and that was huge. Oh, Caught fish and loved my life outside. And thanks for doing this and thank you, Mark. We appreciate newer to Thursday Night Live. Yeah. Um, 32nd 30 so uh richard was 32 marathon pushing his son uh john miller had a health scare last friday and thankfully i was here to watch you guys again that's that's the that's championships there's wins and there's victories and there's championships and john my friend you got a championship so put that trophy on the shelf behind you so we can see it every time we come live on thursday night live uh, Bill Borland, lots of fun, always fun, always fun when you guys are here. Um, Craig will not be in town to get donuts, but might send the <laughs> wife. That's what I like to hear. Uh, Russ won bike race on Zwift and drank in a pub on St. Patty's Day. The small victories are everything. Uh, Bruce got the first vaccine jab this week, so that's pretty nice awesome. Nurse. Um, that means you're how old, Bruce? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to do the math in my head. Do the like, math. Uh, He's a little older. Yeah. Joe hit the horns for that one. Uh, they've been quiet tonight. Oh, he needs the air horns. We need to. Oh, yes. Bow, 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 bow. And now I don't Too know good. where our song went. That's the best. That's the best sound effect right there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, don't think my comments are showing up. This one is, Mark. We see it. Uh, Blake with a win here. My 77-year-old mom had a lump removed from her throat this week, and it turned out not to be freaking cancer. <laughs> That's a championship right yeah, there. huge win. That's so awesome. So, anyways, folks, we're back here next Thursday night live it's too many days away uh we might have another album i'm sweating <laughs> i gotta i gotta get i gotta get my my oh. uh my uh hat off ben loves st baddie's day beers got the best and uh but he made the show so good for him we got a trooper badge you get a trooper badge, trooper, a trooper badge. <laughs> yeah so uh anyways uh that's how she goes folks sometimes the flies are quick and sometimes they take a little longer Sometimes I don't spill my beer, and sometimes I do. And if I do <laughs> spill my beer, we cut the show short because I ran out of beer. Are those okay. hearts? Are those, those, those are hearts. Glasses? 
Are we gonna stay after and practice a bit? Well, we should. We should. <laughs> we, should we should practice a lot of that. For real we guys. should actually not have another episode for yeah. seven months. Uh, it might take uh, us a while to oh, get Oh, what are we back. tying? Good question. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I have to go over there. Plug himself so, and find out. So I'm gonna. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, yeah, guys. Well, another Outside. week till we uh, till we can see you again. Um, well, we're uh, we can't say it enough about how thankful we are for you guys and for the support that you've given us. Like Dana said multiple times, we'd just be a couple dudes here acting like fools if it wasn't for you guys, and uh, really can't say enough. So it's we're sad that we're we'll still say, a couple dudes well, yeah, acting well, like fools. That's gonna happen regardless. But what do we got next week? Some uh, small, a size 18 black. Beauty Midge. Ooh, that's a good one. And a size 14 Crystal Larva. So, Ooh. all right, all right. Some some small. Flies. We're going small next week, small folks. Next week. But uh, although the flies are small, we're going to bring big things. I don't know. That's I just, good. I just set us up for Yeah, set it. Um, yeah, like, and like Tim was saying before I really cut him off, mm-hmm. was the uh, idea behind this is that you guys matter. You're a big part of the show. Um, we appreciate you guys. Reach out to us, okay? And this this is being straight up honest. And if you can't take me serious, uh, just look the other way so you can only hear me and not see me. Uh, reach out, okay? Phone numbers on the website, Instagram, uh, Facebook, emails. If you need to chat, there's a ton of people in this group, okay? There's a hundred and some people watching right now, still here, and they all are awesome and they all will chat with you if you need someone to talk to this yeah. is your people okay if you want to chat fishing if you if you're going through something tough if you're not sure how next thursday you're going to share a win because the week is really crappy us yeah. everybody here the group the group of people add those people in the comments as friends on facebook because that's the magic of this group uh, is that it's like-minded people and i'm, I'm i tell you if you're going through something and you don't reach out, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. Okay. It's family, guys. That's what this is. We want to be there for you. And hopefully, uh, well, we ha- you have been there for us, so we know how that feels. So let us repay. Um, but these people here who are talking and are commenting on all your stuff, they're enjoying in your wins as much as everybody else. And they're going to enjoy helping you in any sorrows or any struggles that you're having. Okay? It's important. It's important to lean on others because we can't do everything on our own. That puts us in a dark place. Yeah. It's, it really it's not it's why there's more than one person on the planet yeah um so remember that be someone's reason to smile today tomorrow this weekend uh have a super awesome week and we will see you guys next thursday i'm dana lattery and i'm tim hepworth see you next week and guys. uh <laughs> love you guys love you all